Hello, everybody. Welcome to Mutant Academy. I was too busy talking about slashers with Sal to bring up the thing to make sure we could see us. Let me know in the chat if you can see us and hear us <laughs> and everything's working fine. Because you never know. No, you never true. know. You never know. Yeah, I've Wait, definitely done live streams where I've just been talking to nothing. Yeah, I, we've all been there, man. We've all yeah. been there. Um, oh, I can see us at least. So, you know, if you can't hear us, let me know and then I'll fix that. But otherwise, we we going we to go. Um, okay, so what show is this? This show is Mutant Academy. This is a show where Sal, hi Sal, that's Sal over, over there. And me, DJ, we talk about the X-Men movies. We do this once a month. Months, oh my God. Once a month, every third Wednesday. That's what day it is. Uh, comic book day. Uh, that Ooh. wasn't an accident. Um, uh, every third Wednesday, we do that. If you go in, people are watching us live. Uh, you can also listen to this. If you prefer to listen to your podcast, you can listen to it over at patreon.com slash only stupid answers. If you want us to pull up your comment, you can do that in the super chat. Please and thank you. Um, but also, if you want to, Sal and I also talk about Spider-Man stuff uh, every other week. So you can do that over at patreon.com slash only stupid answers. Them's the shows. What are we doing today? We are now at X-Men Days of Future Past, released in 2014. Um, directed by Brian Singer. This is his third, but not unfortunately last uh, x-men movie it was written by simon kinberg jane goldman matthew vaughn the x-men send wolverine to the past in a desperate effort to change history and prevent an event that results in doom for both humans and mutants most mostly mutants yeah mostly mutants mostly mutants yeah um Wait, do we establish in this one what happens to the humans? Oh yeah, I mean, well, you look at like the nightmare world that they come from. I don't, I don't imagine that humans are living La Vida Loca. Yeah, yeah, just around <laughs> yeah. the corner. I mean, the you know, Terminator hellscape we got going on. Because I just, I read, um, I read the two comics, the the two issue Days of Future Past story. Ah, uh, yes. After after our Wolver the Wolverine discussion, I was like, I gotta, I should check these out before we before we discuss it. Yeah, and I can't remember if it was in the movie. Or if it was in the comic where they're like, yeah, the whole like no mutants thing, they like took to a degree that even if your great grandkids were going to be a mutant, you're out. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think that was in this. Yeah. I know in the in the comic book, they're certainly just, they're like, I mean, they just started killing everybody. I mean, yeah. You know. Anybody, you know, you're a friend of the mutant Hulk, you're mutant adjacent, Spider-Man's out of here. <laughs> right. Everybody died and there was no stopping it. And yeah. it's only two issues anyway. So why are you even asking? Who cares? Oh, my God. I love the brevity. Oh, I was like, yeah. this is only. And then they get the because it was in a trade. Right. <laughs> and there's like half a dozen other issues that have not. The, the trade is days of future past. Yep. There's like half a dozen other issues that have nothing to do with that. And I was like, yeah. this, is, this is brilliant. <laughs> right. They're like, and Kitty Pride's Jewish, but it's Christmas time. And everyone yeah. left. So she's in the mansion and an alien chases her. Like, yep. And I was wondering, I didn't. <laughs> You knew the exact trade I picked up. Uh, I I flipped through it. I was like, "Is this a brood?" I don't care enough to check out if it is. No, <laughs> I don't think it is. I think it's just something design. else. Yeah. No, it's yeah, it's it's cool. Um, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh my god! They could retcon oh. that, by the way. Now Marvel, mm -hmm. you could say when you you do X Men versus Aliens. Yep. And Kitty Pride's like, I know this creature. Yes. Like I fought it before, and mm -hmm. you just cut back and you just change the art. You just make yep. it a xenomorph. That'd be great. That'd be yeah. good. Don't change the brood to xenomorphs. No, 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 no. You could though, but but don't do that. But this one issue, yeah, that'd be great. Yeah. Um, it is weird that yeah. Disney owns the right to Alien. It is really weird, especially because like, you know, they they don't know how to make movies anymore. <laughs> yeah, and also like, definitely not like, how do we make Alien Four Quadrant? You don't. <laughs> don't. Don't. At least one of those quadrants ain't coming along. <laughs> yeah. No, I'm good. I'm good. Yeah. Uh, and and if you do decide to make an alien movie, don't invite Ridley Scott. He's mm -hmm. forgotten how. I oof, tangents. Every, what right off the bat? Tangents, everybody. Yeah. I do. I like might, those. You might hate me for this. No, no, no. I I don't. I don't. I think I like. I don't remember them well. I liked Covenant better than Prometheus. Sure. But there is part of me that wants to see Michael Fassbender's character now that he's like the alien daddy. Right. Corny Weaver. Oh. crossover part of my brain it's like the one thing you can salvage from those movies yes is michael fassbender's robot Dating. alien daddy yeah. and having sigourney 
I feel like they're the two poles at this point, and I'd like to see them confront each other. <laughs> Ripley killing David would be would be cool, almost like. worth David, oh. right? Yeah. Okay, you get it. You get where I'm coming from. Well, I do. I get it. I get it. Especially when you get in the covenant and it's like the alien is spreading through spores and you're like, wait, it got worse. Right. It evolved into <laughs> something less effective. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Cause right now it doesn't even need to see you to kill you. I know. No, anyway. the, the, the morality and the lesson of that whole, of, of whatever really, really Scott was trying to force alien to be about yeah. is just so muddy and lost it's like the Matrix trilogy where it's like, oh, I think I know what this is about. And the Wachowski's like, no, it's not. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I know you think it, uh, that you know what it's about, but it's really about this. Well, that's really unsatisfying. Mm -hmm. like, I don't care how unsatisfying it is. It's our movies. Gosh, dang it. Yeah. I, I am. I am um, if we ever get around to it in the strikes, uh, they're supposed to be making that alien show. Yes. Oh, oh man. The same guy that did Legion. And if yeah. though, and he did Legion and Fargo, and like, those are, shows are track record. It's like first two seasons will probably be real good. I mean, uh, <laughs> I only want one. Like I, I'm, no. I'm so like, I'm so gun shy about people revisiting my beloved franchises. I'm like, if you're going to do it, get in and get out. Please don't overstay your welcome. Don't yeah. drive this thing into the ground. You know, like if you're going to be make a Predator show, I want six episodes and then you get out and you yeah. don't do any more. I don't want to see an alien show that's like, man, season seven's where it really got good. Season yeah, yeah, yeah. Seven, alien, alien can't handle more than two movies. Yep. You know what I mean? Terminator, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm amazed that the Sarah Connor Chronicles lasted as long as it did. Mm -hmm. Terminator is only two franch is only two movies. It's yeah. a movie franchise. It can't yeah. handle like 20 episodes. Well, and on that note, Terminator is a great uh, segue thing as well yeah. to this movie. Because for those that don't know, Days of Future Past is what if Terminator but X-Men. It That's Which what is it is. Which is fine by me. Yeah. That's yeah. exactly what I want to see. Yes. And we, we, mostly, we mostly get there. I'll point out later, and we could talk about it later, that it is interesting in our one Sentinel movie, we still haven't gotten like classic 90s X-Men Sentinel situation. No. Like that first episode of X-Men the Animated Series. We haven't gotten that in movies, which is I, weird. <laughs> I think we're going to get them, and I think they're going to be Stark Tech. Like, hey, Armor Wars, you want to really well, tease us? The U.S. government makes makes Sentinels out of stolen Stark Tech. You're 1,000% right. And also, anybody playing at home, playing the home game, if you ever want to try and predict what Marvel's doing, like two years from now, look at what the comics are doing. So right now, the Sentinels are Stark Tech, right? And yeah. Fall of X, right? Yeah. There's yeah. a reason. I remember when I was reading, and also Hickman, of all the creators, because I feel like Hickman wouldn't be the guy for this, but of all the creators, Hickman is their guy to like, I remember when I was reading Infinity, which was like Thanos versus Inhumans, and yeah. suddenly Thanos had henchmen. I'm like, well, these guys are going to be in the movie. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, no. that was. And then, and then Marvel had a big push of like, okay, now, no, we need a new Iron Man. We need a new Cap. We need a new Thor. It's like, well, this is, they're getting ready for. Like are you when, gonna... the, he's, when Chris Hemsworth, the, when the Chris's leave, this is what they're yeah. getting ready for. <laughs> that's right. That's right. Yeah. No, it's, it's, it was, it was rough. I remember um, there's another uh, story called Avengers No Surrender, which like had the Black Order in it yeah. in the, from the beginning. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was before, it was right before Infinity War came out. Yeah. And uh, Jim Zub and company Al Ewing and Mark Wade were writing the whole thing together. And at one point they were talking and they're like, we don't really have a place for the Black Order. Like it doesn't really fit in the story anymore. Yeah. So they're like, we're going to cut the Black Order. And, then uh, Uber editor Tom Brevoort uh, just went, I think you're going to want to keep the Black Order in this. Yeah, 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 yeah. And they're like, uh, Tom, are you saying that the Black Order are going to be in Infinity War? And he's like, all I'm saying is if there's a comic book that's coming out around the same time as Infinity War and the Black Order were in it, that wouldn't be a bad thing. <laughs> so, like, yeah, they're definitely on the same page. Yes. Yeah. So, anyway. Anyway. Um, but, yeah. So, so this is very much... Um, uh, if the comic itself merely hinted at the ter Terminator connections, this movie dives right, right into in. them. Um, uh, on Rotten Tomatoes, this has a uh, Rotten Tomatoes score of 90% with an audience score of 91%. X-Men Days of Future Past combines the best elements of the series to produce a satisfyingly fast-paced outing that ranks among the franchise's finest installments. I agree. I we're not at a rating yet, but I also, <laughs> but I, but I also agree. Yeah, um, yeah. This, we'll is, get, this, we'll, is a, this is the apology tour movie. Everyone's like not happy with X Men right now, and this they're I mean like as I as I recall, and it's not even like I have trivia about this. It's just the yeah. the, the general consensus among audience goers was just they they begged Brian Singer to come back yeah. to kind of give it this air of like you know coming home. Yeah. This is a perfect marriage of the first class universe and the Brian Singer verse put together into one friggin' flick yeah. dueling timelines 
I was I was here for when they announced the title. I was like, yes, yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> well, and again, we'll get into it more uh, once we get into the details of it. But you're one hundred percent right in that they they gave themselves a little bit of a gift with this story by having a younger version of the cast, so yeah. that allowed uh, the crossover element. We're also very much as of twenty fourteen. We are very much in a post Avengers age now, where it's yes. like, okay, all bets are off, yeah. nothing's off the table. Uh, so let's go go to some of our um, classic stories. And unlike Dark Phoenix, they were able to they were able to land maybe because this is two issues, and Dark Phoenix is more is more than that. <laughs> yeah, well, no, and and I think this one has an agenda. Like Dark Phoenix and Apocalypse are. Uh, we've we've re, we have reinvigorated the X Men franchise. Let's do the next thing. Yeah. Without any plan for the future. Yeah. This future past is we need to we need to re-engender ourselves to the audience. Yeah. Like we need to apologize to the audience and prove the X-Men is just as important and valid as those guys across the aisle. Yep. Which and, is such a weird position. Yeah. For the X-Men to be in and right? to have continued to be in to this day. Yeah. Uh um uh because for so Sal and I, we're Sal and I've been talking to Sal about maybe doing a, a show about the Amalgam comics where Marvel and DC merged because yep. I've been I've been collecting them again recently, the ones I was missing. Uh, and something I noticed that we'll definitely mention in that episode is not one exists within this amalgamated universe, but there's not a title that is an Avengers crossover title. There's like four Justice Leagues That's mixed weird. with X Men, yeah. but not one of them in Avengers. Oh. Because it's, it's so, 1994. Exactly. exactly. <laughs> or six. Yeah. So it's weird for those yeah. that are like younger and have Avengers is the top of the heat for Marvel. There was decades where that was not the case. Nope. <laughs> yeah. No, no. They didn't even bother. They yeah. weren't like, oh, it'd be fun to make it like, you know. Yeah. Nope. Yeah. Not even nope. a little bit. So getting into it, we begin with our classic uh, 20th Century Fox uh, fanfare, but they sneak in a little bit of the X-Men theme. Mm -hmm. uh, that's how iconic it is at, at this point. Yep. And we cut to a future New York City, which is not looking so great. Uh, very, very Terminator-esque. Uh, a little bit of neon in there. And we get some Professor X VO where he says, are we going, this is voiceover uh, of this dystopia where he's saying, are we going to destroy ourselves like so many species before us? Mm. Which I had to pause and be like, how many species destroyed <laughs> themselves? themselves? Yeah, the we dinosaurs destroyed. did not ask for it. Yeah, they didn't create the meteor that killed them. No. <laughs> and then there's all the ones that we killed, but that's on us. Yeah. Anyway. Yeah. Um, We got around a lot for reasons that I'm not, entirely sure why so then we cut to moscow i guess right. to show the whole world is fucked and, and again for context in the comic it's basically just north america yeah and and the threat is if the sentinels leave north america everybody's gonna nuke the shit out of everybody <laughs> um yeah. which i thought those stakes were pretty uh pretty good i'm kind of bummed we lost them here but anyway yeah, yeah. so in moscow uh, the Sentinels attack our our young our team of young youngins young guns, um, which is most is comprised of Kitty Bishop Colossus Sunspot Warpath Iceman and Blink. Yep, our third Colossus, I think. <laughs> no, I think it's Cudmore. I think it's, it's the same Cudmore. guy. It's All right, Cudmore. good. Could we keep bringing Cudmore back? All right. Um, he doesn't get any more to do. No, but we keep bringing him back. Yeah, this is also one of those movies where they were like let them be the characters that we like hired them to be as mm -hmm. opposed to like literally the entire franchise up until this point has been like, Ooh, maybe ice will be fully iced. And then in yeah. X-Men three, the last stand, they're like, Oh, maybe for two seconds, he could be fully ice. Yeah. You know, maybe we'll have Colossus actually be useful and do stuff. Yeah. But this is the one where they're like, do it all, throw yeah. it all, do yeah. everything. Exactly. Oh, and they understand, they know, they under either they understand the characters they like or they understand the characters they've invested time in. Yeah. And they allow the rest to like you have cool powers in your cannon fodder, the end. Full stop. Yeah. We're gonna see where you will have a moment. Yeah. So um uh these future sentinels show up. Uh they have mimicky, you know, we love this in the mid, oh you know, God. the 2010s. You got the little like basically the metal goo, goo robots. Uh yes. if you saw live die repeat, yep. uh, which is not the name of that movie no it's edge of tomorrow there you go thank you um but uh, uh i think there's that recent chris pratt movie that has the goo oh, we yeah. love this shit 
It doesn't look bad here. It's just, we, we just love it. Uh, At least uh, they explain it. In this one, they explain why it looks like that. Yeah. Which I'm like, all right, I hate it, but yeah. it well, I get it. In the universe, you, that's fine. And you also get enough of a design element that makes them look kind of like Nimrod. Like, it's like, okay, there's so, there's enough here that's Yeah, you can, you can imagine my disappointment. Because I love the Sentinels. When Nimrod shows up and I'm like, Who's this guy? Yeah. Like, <laughs> this is the apex of Sentinel technology. He's yeah. fuchsia. Yeah. He, he looks like a he looks like an idiot. He looks like yeah. the Easter Bunny. Mm -hmm. And they're like, no, Nimrod's the scariest. He's so scary. He looks like a goober. Yeah. yeah. And I'm like, yep. yeah, all right. <laughs> I guess I like the idea of like the, in, the intimidation game being um your 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 future robotic death will come in the form of like a hilarious like you know, like like the Stay Puff Marshmallow Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Uh-huh. Um, so uh there's a whole fight uh, where pretty much everybody dies while uh, Kitty and Bishop are running away. What we learn is that I guess I listen, they don't even bother. They're just I, like, I, listen, I enjoy this movie, mm -hmm. uh, but there's some things that they just kind of yada yada right over. There's some things that just don't quite they have fall. to. And so what we learn is that I guess Kitty's ability to phase through matter also allows her to phase through time in the sense that she, she, <laughs> she sends people's consciousness back in the comic this is rachel summers which yeah. I, I in hindsight i apparently will say it and there's a later thing where we bring it up but uh they cut her from the draft which makes sense because that would reveal the return of characters that we are trying to save for the end of the movie uh-huh um but um I remember when I watched this, like, yeah, fine, because you know, Kitty's important in the comic, she's important here. Watching it again, I'm like, this doesn't make any fucking sense. <laughs> nope, nope. She just phases your mind through time. And I'm like, all right. Yeah. I mean, sure. Listen, we got Elliot Page back. That's cool. Uh yeah. Yeah, she's important. And it, and you can't send Kitty back this time because she's she'd be a feat. She'd be, it wouldn't even be the glimmer of anybody's eye at this point. In exactly. She go, oh, she goes back 18 years yeah. to when like things were less dark. Yeah. <laughs> yes. You know? But uh yeah, by the way, we should point out, I think we did not see the rogue cut. We oh did yeah. The theatrical and, cut. Because I did look into it and I wasn't gonna I own this movie, so I wasn't gonna spend money on a movie I already own to nope. see a different cut of the movie. Yeah. Although maybe I, at some point I will. You know? I, I like the idea behind it. And I've seen scenes from the rogue cut and I, yeah. I, I wish it were cause I like the idea of bringing back rogue and, yeah. and you know, because at, at some point or other you're watching the movie and Wolverine is like, you know, just like jiving out and having a good time in the seventies and you go, so Kitty's back in the in the future, just going. Yeah, yeah, I was. Like, uh, yeah, I think mean, uh, this is the first time watching. It's like, wait a second, what are the time? What is the is there time dilation going on? Please tell me there's time dilation. Like every yeah. minute that she spends here is a day in the past because yeah. like Wolverine's sleeping, but like he doesn't need to sleep in the past. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe we could have snuck in a line to explain that one. It's listen, when you go in the past, it's like you yeah. just it's it's they literally stop and like, you've seen the movie Inception, right? Well, okay, right. so when you're dreaming, <laughs> yeah, yeah. No, I mean Wolverine is the dumb person who could easily say, What what if I gotta take a dump? Am I gonna take a dump in the past and you're gonna phase me there? No, 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 no. It, it's time dilation, it won't matter. Yeah. Like it's just it's trust me, like I, I I'll I'll for me it'll only be like 10 minutes. For you, it'll be like a, a like a week. I, oh, okay, cool. I re I I 100. I'm not even fucking joking. I wish that was the line. All right. Yeah. So if I need to take a dump, how does that work? And that's how she gets the time dilation thing is through Wolver Wolverine's like, listen, look listen. I eat a lot of red meat. All right. right. But I need to take a shit. <laughs> yeah. Or like I take lots of naps in the past because I was like an opium addict. <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> oh yeah. my god. Um, anyway, well, let's just assume that's what's happening. Sure. Um, so what we learn is we got a. Okay, so now we get a, a info dump with a bunch of characters who should know all this information already. One hundred percent. Because it's the it's the old X Men. It's like Professor X and Magneto explaining one half of it, and Kitty and Bishop and the rest explaining the other half. And it's like, have you all not? Do we not know each other? Us fifteen years. Like what's? And also, uh, can I just ask a question about Bishop? Because Bishop Please. is a time traveler. Yeah. Yeah. Is he <laughs> like, it, like you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Is he from the future and he's here now? Or no, not in this. This one, he's just a guy that uses. It doesn't need a normal gun. He needs guns powered by his own power, right? Which is powered by other people's power. Yes. Who branded him? Mm -hmm. Well, because we're in... he still has the M. 
Yeah, but this is the future. This is the future where we brand people with M's, right? That's that is this. Is it because I don't see any other brands? I thought... and the, Sent the Sentinels seem pretty dispassionate. Yeah, it is. It is um, a little. I want to say in the earlier montage we see one. It is a little bit weird because we spend time with a guy with a big like eagle tattoo on his eye. Yeah, it just. It's just a throwaway, like, hey, the guy's in the future. Um, but, yeah, no, uh, Bishop is there for you to go, it's Bishop. Yes, 100%. <laughs> just like Blink. 100%. Blink is from an alternate future. Yes. Or actually an alternate present, I should say. Yeah. And in this, it's just, no. Yeah. <laughs> no. Also, I think in the comics, uh, Blink is supposed to be from the Bahamas. And know. and we've just decided in the live because this in the Asian. show she's Asian and it's like I you know all right I, whatever, yeah. um. Anyway, so yeah, so now we're in China, yeah. And see, this is the but see now it's like I remember there was a big deal that I think it's Fan Bing Bing is the actress that plays Blink. I yeah. remember being oh, this is back when we were like, what if China funded our movies? <laughs> what oh, if we know, made yeah. what if we made movies that China wanted uh, wanted us to make? Yeah. Uh, so maybe that's the reason why a bulk of the future stuff takes place in China of all places. I guess, yeah. Um, even though it doesn't, it's the most like orientalism western view of china it's like a pagoda or something i know and like the sentinels didn't break that they they knocked over all our skyscrapers but they didn't knock they down did. these, these 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 areas where listen, like these, these prestige cultural landmark all right yeah. we can't uh yeah listen it's just it's a problem okay yeah. like it's you know the, the sentinels like ooh, that would be we, problematic the sentinel the sen listen the sentinels operate like cops all right like human lives whatever property damage oh my god let's not yeah. destroy property no um anyway so, uh, Storm Wolverine, Ma Professor X, Magneto show up with China with our young kids, and so this is where Kitty explains time travel. Yeah, uh, and it is, and then X explains the history of the Sentinels, which again, all of you, you're all, all of friends. you know that you you send each other text. Yep, or he could uh, just dump it into their brains like they always knew. <laughs> yes. But we get it. It's we need the context. We're also this is the first time for a lot of people because they got up and left after the Wolverine. They didn't see the Professor X's back. So like this yes. is the first time we're seeing Magne with real Magneto and real Professor X and in also, a movie together. We do not explain that, which is fine. No, we can all. The, I love that. Theoretically, this movie exists to erase X Men Origins and Last Stand from existence, right? Yep. yep. But That's I love that for. that impulse is from the beginning. Like, who we're not. Fuck last stand. We're not gonna explain why Professor X is back. He's back. All right. No, he came back at the in the post credits of Last Stand, but yeah. also he came back physically in the post credits of the Wolverine. the Wolverine. He's back. And then yeah, and I guess like that's yeah, and he has metal claws, so I'm guessing, and I think we circulated in this last episode that Magneto is just like, You're more useful if you have metal claws, meh, and just shoves all the adamantium back into his body because in Days of Future Past he has metal claws. Yeah. In the end of the Wolverine, he has bone claws. The bone claws. I guess it, one good thing there is it's just the claws. Yeah. yeah. Or mm -hmm. ooh, what if they figured out Kitty can like bounce through time already? And yeah. so she sends like someone back in time and then unmakes the last fight in yes. the Wolverine. So he <laughs> never loses his adamantium claws. Sure. I, I'll take it. I'll, that also I'll... explains why he doesn't like miss the woman he loves from mm -hmm. the Wolverine. <laughs> yep. Oh, she's super dead at this point. She's right? And where's Yukio? Dead. Yeah. Oh, fuck. It, that would have been fucking cool if I had Yukio in here. Her with him? Like her, yeah. like, I'm his bodyguard. That would yeah. be freaking dope. Been, that would have been cool. And you could get it. You could have done the classic, like, dystopian future shit where now she has, like, a robot eye or some shit. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Whatever. Okay. Yeah. Um, so what we uh, what we what we're learning is basically at some point in the classic time travel shit, one specific thing led to this entire future. And if we change that one thing, there's no butterfly effect yep. other than good things. All right. <laughs> um, yeah. So oh, I should point out we also have to justify. You know, we're, it's a it's a homecoming of sorts. It's Brian yeah. Singer's X Men meets uh, Matthew Vaughn's X Men. Uh, one note you should know, Brian, is that uh, uh, Jennifer Lawrence is a big screaming deal. Mm -hmm. So if you could tailor everything around Mystique, that would be great. Yeah. Well, I, I will say this. I hear what they you do. Saying, but I will say this. Mystique is a key part of the original comic book. So that's another yes. favor they gave themselves, which I, if I'm being honest, I have to feel like was an accident. Oh, totally. Like, an accident. Hey, first class. Like, know that. Jennifer Lawrence is here. We're making her a big deal. And then it's like, hey, we just lucked out. Mystique <laughs> actually is a big deal. Yeah. In Days of Future Past. <laughs> right? Amazing. Oh. And it works. And I love, but it's so fun to see Patrick Stewart's Professor X be like, oh, yes, I, I, she was like my, 
And I'm like, yeah, because when she poisoned your brain in the first X-Men movie, I feel like she didn't know you very well, but all mm-hmm. right. <laughs> yeah. One, again, the retcons start fast. Uh, yeah. They're like, by, and which it, I actually do. Like, listen, man, you know, movies, you add stuff to it or whatever. I do kind of oh. like this moment. Uh, this is as good a retcon as you're going to get with Patrick Stewart saying, like, yeah, validating. Yeah, that was a thing. By all the that way. stuff you saw, that all happened in the original timeline, too. Yeah. I was just less, I was just less passionate about it. Yeah, I cared. I cared less. <laughs> there, we, we cut a scene where I cried about Mystique poisoning me. We, yeah. <laughs> Poor Raven. Yeah, exactly. So anyway, Mystique uh, in, I think it's 1973, is yeah. going to kill Trask, played by Peter Dinklage, at the Paris Peace Accords. At this point, so they get Mystique's DNA, which 50 years from now will be used, which sets this movie in 2023. Is yeah. This year? Oh, goddamn. Oh, but, so this takes place before Tony Stark snaps. Uh, yeah, yeah exactly. <laughs> um, uh, and so these future Sentinels that are adaptive are based on Mystique's genetics. Question for you, Sal. Yeah. Because they seem to be able to, there seems to be no rhyme or reason I can tell. Like maybe there's something in the fight that I missed. They can just mimic yeah. mutant powers. No, they just mimic powers. Okay, um, so they don't need I, to touch them or interact with them any specific way to get that ability. It doesn't seem like it. Although there, are, I mean, you know, when he's fighting uh, Sunspot and Iceman, like it's only when they use their powers on them that they can then have them because okay, otherwise they would have used them to kill each other back in the alternate timeline that like you know Kitty and Bishop create. Yeah. So I'm guessing that they have to come into physical contact with them. Otherwise, okay. they would just be like, well, if I know Magneto exists, then I am Magneto now, and the world's over. You know, I was gonna, right? I was gonna say because the one problem with that is then couldn't they also do the time kitty's time travel trip absolutely and you think like we can't let them get kitty lest they go back in time in the rogue cut they actually have rogue in cerebro and they're experimenting on her because they want her ability to steal newton's powers but they seem to be able to do that anyway so whatever yeah um okay so uh they land on wolverine being the guy uh, because it's Hugh Jackman and it's his franchise. And That's right. Uh, no, uh, the ex- explanation they give in the movie is his... This is another <sighs> like, all right, I, I guess this is what we're doing. She says, I can't do it that far in the past because it will ta- tear your mind apart. Yep. Which I guess means literally and physically. <laughs> yeah. Um, and uh, because Wolverine says, what about somebody whose mind can heal? Can heal instantly. And listen, Logan. Obviously, you have a healing factor, but if there's anybody in here whose mind has proven not to be the best, the the mind specifically not be the best at healing, yeah, it's you, my guy. Uh, but anyway, maybe maybe, maybe that's like a uh, that's very charitable. Yeah, just like uh, in the time between picking him up at the Wolverine and now, Professor X finally makes good on that deal to heal his mind yes. and give him the secrets he's been asking for. Yeah, and so now he's like learned these techniques. And he can, you know, yeah, whatever. Yeah. Doesn't matter. Anyway, this is why we're sending Hugh, Hugh Jackman back. So yeah. we get Hugh Jackman back in 1973. And uh, he's waking up naked in bed. And God fucking damn it, Hugh Jackman's a fucking monster in this scene. He's veins for days. Oh, yeah. my God. <laughs> yeah, he's he's messed up. But, but, uh, but it's, I mean, good for him, I guess. Yeah. He looks good. But it, it is one of those that's like, yeah, man, if I had to do this workout regimen, I'd want to retire from Wolverine too. God damn it. I know. I know. His, his deal is like, listen, I'll come back for Logan as long as I get to be an old man and wear a suit most of the time. Fine and, by me. And I'll, and I'll get back and I'll come back for Deadpool 3 if I... They didn't I even have to talk him into the comic suit because it's like, yeah, listen, if I don't if I don't have to get in Days of Future past shape, or the, we mentioned this on the Wolverine too, it's like, fucking... Yeah. Shit. Can somebody get him a glass of water stat? <laughs> I know. He's like, no, I can't. Otherwise, I won't, I won't be oh, <laughs> I won't be Stretch God. Armstrong. Where you have to no, it's uh who's the uh Stretch Armstrong's villain? Vac Man. You know yeah, that? Vac Man. You gotta Yeah. And then let us not forget the Vac Pack, who were heroes that were Vac Man, which was cool because <laughs> he was the monster. Monsters are cool. That's right. Yeah. 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 Um so eventually those things would bust and be like they just pop like balloons. It's bomb. Oh yeah. Um, so uh, uh, Wolverine has slept with the thugs show up and he slept. He's supposed to be guarding the quote unquote the boss's daughter yep. and they're all pissy about it. And uh, he fucks him up with his bone claws because in the past he has bone claws. Yeah. Um, now I'm assuming he doesn't know. It's funny. Like I I think that he discovers he has bone claws at some point. Right. Like remember in Wolverine he doesn't know he has bone claws or maybe he does. 
Yeah, because ah. again, we never established wh where he got his memory when he got his memories back. Yeah, he is, in this, he is surprised by it, but it, I read it as more of like, "Oh, that's right, this is pre that." <laughs> I like the idea that he remember like the Wolverine from the future is like, "I'll just use my claws," yeah. and the Wolverine in the past at this point in the seventies doesn't know he has bone claws, mm -hmm. and so he's just like, "Yeah, let's go." And if he were to switch, in a case that happens. Mm -hmm. He's like, what are these? <laughs> what are these uh, monsters think? What's it happening to me? Like, I is, feel I, I like that idea. It is interesting how they evolve that concept because in the in the uh, Days of Future Past comic, we get that iconic panel that we don't get here, which is a bummer of like Wolverine being blasted to smithereens. No, that and we don't have a, a, the posters. The posters. Fuck. How could we Dude, not? Do titties the in it. I you know. Oh my god, that would have been so great. Uh, in the but, chat, let us know if there is a like one, you know how they made like four posters. If there's yeah. one promotional poster, it should have been one promotional poster. They should have done that. We're not there yet. If they made that movie now, they'd fucking do that shit. Marvel would have done it. Marvel would have had Boss Logic make it or something. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but in that panel, when he gets eviscerated, there's a shot where it's like you see his bone arm. Yeah, and it's really like there's a like a robotic scaffolding for the claws. It's like you guys didn't know. You didn't know yet. You didn't no. know. We. Oh hell no. No, yeah. no, 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 no. They didn't know that back then. They they're there's still like, is it part of his mutate? Whatever. He's got claws. <laughs> Whatever. Yeah, no, I think no, uh, since uh Barry Winter Smith's book, they were like, it's no. He his mutant ability is healing and hunting. Yeah. The 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 metal shit yeah. is project science. Like is, yeah. is them. It's probably it's department H. Yeah. Um, so uh blah, blah, blah. yeah, so he fucks up these guys. We cut to uh Peter Dinklage's trask. Um it, Yeah, Peter Dinklage at the height of his Dinklaging, like let's just get Peter. This felt like the most stunt casting to me. I don't know about you. I like Peter yeah. Dinklage, I think he's good, but I was like, Oh, Peter Dinklage in another thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh yeah, this is definitely the height of that. I do I do like that. Hmm, how do I want to phrase this? Yeah. Him being a shorter person has nothing to do he's just trask <laughs> there's nothing i like that a lot yeah he's not but, playing the dwarf or like whatever he's just they don't even talk trask. about it like it, but unlike the 70s no one addresses it yeah Everyone's really yeah. cool about it and also uh uh oh, everybody at home take this with the sensitive sensitivity that is intended exactly. i do feel like there could be like a subtext there yeah. It's it's like a, two coins because on the one hand I I do like that it's like it doesn't we just got this actor because he's he's a great he's actor good. he's, he's good exactly yeah but I could see a reality where it's like fuck all these mutants with the fucking laser eyes and <laughs> angel wings and shit exactly man. exactly I don't even I'm just me and nobody likes me this way exactly so and you all get to be whatever I, I was born this different. way oh, and, man. yeah yeah exactly exactly uh, there, yeah. there's something there it's never addressed i'm sure there's no deleted scene that just that describes it i think they want you to just go like if, listen if you see a little person in this movie that's on you yeah, yeah. And it's yeah. like all right i'm just saying like well, I remember a Peter Dinklage has been acting for a long time, and he's mm -hmm. not in a lot of things. And then suddenly he is in a lot of yeah. things. Yeah, I, I feel like you're just trying to, trying to cash in on Peter Dinklage's popularity, which you know more power to you. But you already have everyone else in this movie. Yeah, yeah. He's he's, he's actually very good, and I have no complaint about it. It was more just like I'm like, hey, look, it's the it's the it guy for yeah. a little while, you know, like. It's Oh, it's mean, like anytime anybody from Game of Thrones shows up in anything, it's like, yes, it's why is Daenerys playing Sarah Connor? What well, Game of Thrones is on TV, man. That's Come why, on. yeah, yeah, and that's, that's exactly Clark's not good, she is very good, yeah, maybe not Terminator, but like by and large, very good. Uh, yeah, yeah but yeah. uh, uh, you know, it's just you know, you can tell everybody going back to these movies will be able to tell when Game of Thrones was on TV 100%. <laughs> um, so uh, Mystique. Sneaks under this base in Saigon to free a unit of uh, mutants to include Havoc. Uh, and, and again, this is, I think the movie really, because it's everything, they, you can really tell like what they care about. The only, other than the marquee characters from the last one, Magneto, Professor X, and Mystique, mm -hmm. Havoc is the only one that shows up yeah. and it's for this scene and that's it. That's right. <laughs> I thought, um, didn't he die? We're not there yet, Sal. Oh, okay. We're not there yet. Um, uh, yeah. We've got a whole other movie to get to before that one. Oh, okay. um, so, yes, yeah, she, she sneaks onto this base. Um, we meet a young striker who I don't have the actor in front of me, but in my notes, I call him Kirkland Brand, Sean William Scott. 
Dude, yeah, he uh, does look like Sean William Scott, doesn't he? Yeah. It's really weird. It's distracting how much he looks like Sean William Scott to the point where I'm like, what's Stifler doing in this movie? Exactly. He, they used him in other, other things too. Like he'll show up in other things and he's William Stryker. And I'm like, so he's the, he's like the third actor. It's Brian Cox. It's yep. that guy I hate so much who's in mm-hmm. the Wolverine Origins yeah. and and then Sean William Scott. And it's yeah. like, none of these people look like Brian Cox. Yeah, and it bums me out too because it makes me think for as much as like they understand the landscape they've made so far. Yeah. It's like you went, you got James McAvoy for Professor X. You got Michael Fassbender for Magneto. Do you guys not understand that the Brian Cox is like, the thir- he's the human component of that trinity? Yeah. So go get a guy. Get right. somebody. Get, yeah. a, get a person. <laughs> yeah. I think they thought they did that with, with X-Men Origins, and they just didn't. That guy yeah, is it's like, that guy it's... is the bad guy in we're... so much crap. Exactly. When the X-Men, we listen, I expect I, I expect more from the first class team than the X-Men Origins team. Totally. So it's like get an act, get a recognizable striker <laughs> is important to your mythology. Get yeah. somebody, get a recognizable actor to play that guy. Yeah. Uh, nothing against this guy, but the fact no. that like you and I only recognize him as not Sean William Scott. Yes. It's a problem. <laughs> it's weird. It's yeah. it's weird. No one said, no one, like, you, you know how hard it is. You know uh, how hard it is to be in movies. Yeah. You know, they're looking at those pictures. They're doing all these editions. And, and no one went, well, he does look just like Sean William Scott, though. And, and also, maybe, I don't know. I can't remember where Sean, Sean William Scott career is at this point. But it's if you're not, doing this now, if, if you're doing this now, get Sean William. He's actually... Pretty fucking good. Like, yeah. just get him. Just do that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. At, he, there's no, there's no moment for young William Stryker where he would be like, oh, like there's yeah. no Sean William Scotting. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah, where yeah. he'd be stiffler. It's yeah. okay. Anyway. Um. Anyway, uh, yeah. I don't know. I just it bumps me. It bumps like. Yeah. Clearly, what happens when you get like movie matters. guys. <laughs> yeah. Clearly, we know Stryker matters enough to keep bringing him back. Yeah. Get a guy. Right. Anyway. Yeah. No. Uh, so Mystique helps them escape. Um, we also, by, I just want to point out, this is where we get uh, Eagle Tattoo Guy and also Toad with goggles that he apparently wears all the time. <sighs> yeah. Um, Wolverine arrives at the X Mansion. Uh, the gate is cracked open in a way that the X at the top of the gate is just slightly Love askew. Yeah. Symbolism, everybody. Symbolism. Um, uh, uh, Hank is the one that answers the door in his human form. Uh, Logan forces way in. I actually really like this interaction. This whole like, listen, we'll be friends in the future. <laughs> <We're> yeah. gonna... <laughs> but for now, I'm gonna punch you in the face. Yes. <laughs> Great um, uh, they get into a scuffle. Beast beats that beast out. Basically, Beast works like Hulk. Yeah. Now, now Beast is a were- is a werewolf. Yes. Mm-hmm. He does. In his defense, he does. In Beast form, looks way better in this movie yes. than in First Class. <laughs> Absolutely. They've they've, they've perfected it. Yeah. Um, so uh, Professor X walks in, played by James McAvoy. There's a younger one. Uh, he's walking. Um, this is another one where, where it's like, all right, I guess this is what we're doing. Wolverine what? says he's uh, uh, 50 years in the future. So again, this is the year. Where Where's Twitter? We should be. This is the year the Sentinels took over for 2023. I know. Um, um, Professor X literally uses Wolverine's own words against them. Against him huh. and says, Fuck off. Um, yeah, yeah, good, uh, good, good the throwback. Yep. Um, so what we learn is ooh, everybody, <laughs> everybody buckle in. Hank created a serum that makes him human, that suppresses his X gene. Yes. Somehow, this serum <laughs> also helps Professor X walk. Right. But a side effect of that is it suppresses his X gene. Which is the purpose of the serum? <laughs> yeah. So the walking is a side effect, but also why would that, why? And also, that's mm-hmm. not. It's like spine severed, right? So it's, it was shot with a bullet. It's yeah. not. It's not like. It's like they keep forgetting where the origins come from. They're like, well, Professor X is only paralyzed because of a of a battle on the psychic plane with the Shadow King. So really, <laughs> if you just make his make the, the, the psychic blocker go away, he can walk again. And it's like, that's only in the comics. There is yeah. no Shadow King in this unless they're watching the, the Legion show. Yeah. Like it's there's nothing here. And it's like, oh right, yeah. We we literally gave him a physical problem. It's a it's a bullet in his spine that well, they pulled out. Help me remember 
when we were doing first class, didn't you float the idea that maybe because uh, Professor X is in Magneto's mind when he kills Shaw? Yes. Like maybe that would create like a psychic block that makes him unable to walk. Yes. It, like he, because he was connected with Shaw and the, the, the coin goes through his brain, it severs his connection to his spine or maybe it like it, psychically it hurts him so bad. It overwhelms his senses and causes him to be paralyzed, to, to, yeah. to be psychically paralyzed. Yeah. And that, if that was the answer, this actually makes sense. That, that actually fits in, yeah. And he more, can be like, you more. broke, like, when you did that, like, yeah. you hurt me, you killed Shaw, and you broke me, you yeah. piece of shit. And that's why he's so mad. But instead, he's just like, no. So, yeah. 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 So so somehow this, oof, uh, oof. Yeah. sure. But, and by the way, all still great. This scene in the mansion is great. Yeah. It, it, like, this is what happens when you get, like, film buffs to just talk about comic book movies, yeah. like objectively, it's like, uh, here's a scene I love. Here's all the things I hate about it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it, you know, like, it, it, I, 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 yeah. Like I'm not trying to bag on this movie. It's the best. I think it's one of the best movies of the franchise. Mm -hmm. And 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 I think that it's a masterclass of acting yes. for us to like. When you're watching the movie, maybe there's a part of your brain that goes no, <laughs> but for the most part, he's just like I. I I I I rub myself with my power so I could sleep. And you're yeah. like, you're just you're just there, you're just in the moment. And it's just yeah. like, yeah, if 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 it it's the difference between watching like um oh god, what's the guy who made all those crappy movies? You was like no, I don't know. A classic crappy movie maker, not not uh, you know, who I'll I'll, I'll come up with it. Yeah, but yeah. um yeah, you know, it's, you're, you're it's right. a difference it's, it's between like a same. real movie and a not real movie. <laughs> And it's the same thing when you're watching Jurassic Park and the T-Rex is attacking the Jeep and suddenly spins the Jeep around and there's a ledge and you're like, wait, that's where the T-Rex came from. Yeah. But when you're watching it in the moment, it's like, you don't care. It's only like Jurassic Park is an S. I've watched that. I watch that like once a year. This one I don't watch as much, but it's the same thing. Like, okay, so this is my third or fourth time watching. You're like, yeah, that doesn't make any yeah. sense, guys. It's Roger, I, was thinking of, I, was thinking, I was thinking of Roger Corman. Oh, yeah. You know, it's like yeah, Roger yeah. Corman is a master filmmaker. And also the movies are like, you know, they, they come out, they're made. They yeah. are exactly what the what the studio made and they're crap. Yep. Yeah. You know, but it's like, but he, but he's a master at his craft. Yes. It's like, it's a, but, but if you just, it, it's almost like this movie is like a Roger Corman movie using the Royal Shakespeare Company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So well, it's just it, like, yeah, it's it sells practice. the crap. Yeah, you can give McAvoy most, mostly anything. And it's like, yeah. Works. McAvoy could I've, not I've, save uh glass uh i haven't seen glass since theaters but i did not dislike glass mm. i didn't like as much as unbreakable and split but i didn't yeah. i didn't i didn't hate it but i haven't seen it since theaters okay i'm not gonna go on a limb and defend glass in our days of future past uh <laughs> uh review think. but um so yeah anyway whatever right when professor x walks he you no know, think he's so good but when he think he good he can walk <laughs> um yeah so um and and again, this is we're just kicking the can down. Although if I was McAvoy, it's like, no man, put me in that wheelchair, dude. Yeah, I can sit all day for work. Fuck yeah, man. <laughs> Hell yeah, you know that's what Patrick Stewart was like. He's like, you yeah. mean to tell me I can just sit? Yeah, he's uh, Patrick Stewart's talking with Sam Jackson, and Jackson's like, man, they keep having me. It's Nick Fury. They keep having me run around all over places. Like, dude, you should just be in a wheelchair. <laughs> work in a scene where Nick Fury is paralyzed. <laughs> <laughs> um. So um. Yeah, so the uh, I should mention, um, uh, while we're talking about things that maybe don't make all the sense in the world, when Wolverine sent back, they're like, okay, Professor, why is not Professor X not going? Because I'm in a tough state right now. I'm going to need you to say, help me the way I helped you. Yes. Um, in this, and Magneto's like, you're also going to need me. <laughs> and that will become increasing, the logic behind that will become increasingly tenuous as the movie goes on. Like, did we need? Yeah. Magneto, because he's only created problems for us. <laughs> yes. Oh, no. He's, he does, I don't think he really cares. Like, this is the movie where I'm like, I think Magneto is just a piece of shit. Yeah. <laughs> like, I don't, I think that he's one of those people who's just like, hey, man, we go back a long way. Mm -hmm. I stole a car. Can you help me out? Yeah. Like, he's just that, he's that kind of friend where he's like, old yes. friend. He keeps saying old friend, like, mm -hmm. not to, not to skip to the end, but when he yeah. says, like, you know, if you let me go, they'll, 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 they'll I'm as good as dead. Eat shit. Yes. <laughs> yeah. You crossed so many lines, man. You know, there's a hole in my spine yeah. because of you, dickhead. Listen, I, I love you, man. And I will cry every time I think of your memory. Bye. Exactly. <laughs> the only thing that will bring us together is genocide. Yeah. Yeah. 
So, uh, but anyway, but that's those are the stakes that are set up because the movie needs <laughs> Michael Fassbender in here. And listen, I like I was mentioning before, I want Michael Fassbender in this movie. So I'm yes. not throwing any stones here. I'm not saying don't do that. I'm just saying the logic behind it. Yeah, it comes like, wait, what was Magneto meant to do in this situation? Because <laughs> whatever that is, he's not doing it. I think that they, I think they think it's like hope. You know what I mean? They're yeah. like, no, he needs, he needs his greatest friend by his side. Or, or, or he, at this point, he has a connection to Mystique. And and, right. I, and, and in their defense, Professor X and uh, Patrick Stewart and Ian McKellen are old men at this point. Yeah. So they're like, yeah, we were pretty good back in the 70s right we were right. <laughs> yeah, we were pretty all right we were cool yeah we no. were cool and then and then uh i, I wish we get one scene between them it would have been cool if there was another scene where magnet Mag professor x looks at magneto and magneto and professor x is like what do you, what do you think about it? he's like i don't i'm starting to think like i was a pretty big asshole back then i'm kind right. of worried maybe i shouldn't be uh yeah. i'm trying to think you back should... to the 70s and i think i wasn't in such a good sp space man i think right. i'm fucked up <laughs> yeah i feel like the me back then would have definitely betrayed all of you <laughs> multiple times. Like yeah. every, every opportunity. Yes. Yes. I everything. Yes. You and I were thinking maybe 10 years ago where we were enemies, but still like kind of cool. Right. And I think 20 years before that, we weren't so cool. Yeah. It was much worse. Like, <laughs> Oh no. Uh, yeah. It, X is like, Oh fuck. Oh fuck. I think you're right. Oh God damn it. Um, can we <laughs> send a message to Wolverine? Leave yeah. Magneto out of it. Yeah. Leave him in jail. Leave him in jail, for fuck's sake. So anyway, we find out that Magneto is being held beneath the Pentagon for killing JFK. We There's, there's wrinkles to that that we'll get to in a minute. Mm -hmm. um, Wolverine. Okay, so they have this weird thing. He says, I know a guy that can get in anywhere, but I don't know how we're going to find him. And then we just do. And it's right, like. Right, I guess. And, and it's like, you know that the reason, like, it, the script is. They don't. They 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 find him by reaching Professor and having him use his powers to locate him, but they don't. Yeah, so, because we're not there. We're yet. not there yet. So either like it's a deleted moment where they're like, no, you know what? He should he should come to Jesus later at the movie. Like let's let's. Yeah. let's. But just I don't like know. Just to bust out a phone book or whatever. Uh, yeah, I guess they just look it up. I mean, you know, um, it's in the, he guess. knows his name. Yeah, I don't. We're not going to do too far. We're, we're about ready to hit the best moment in this movie, but I don't want to get out <laughs> of myself. Totally. Um, so, meanwhile, Mystique sneaks into Trask's lab, uh, mimicking Trask, and we're getting to another moment where, you know, I just have questions about Mystique's powers because there's a thumbprint scanner, and it's like, and she does her little mute power and does yeah. a thumbprint. It's like, how do you know what that motherfucker's thumbprint? I guess it's just, I mean, it's like magic, you know? Like yeah. if, you, if you approximate him, you also have his blood type and his <laughs> fingerprint. And yeah. You can impregnate people with his genetic material. Like, I don't know. <laughs> and that, but see, that should be the key to, to figuring out Mystique is there's a thumb scanner because her thumbprint's always the same. That would be kind of fun, actually. Yeah. Anyway. I kind of love that. Yeah. Also, maybe do make it more work for her because that shows her little, it's not just the mimicking power. She has little sneaky spy skills too. Yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, that would be a great moment for her, like with somebody, you know, like, yeah. like you can't, you can't like, like what do you, I thought you copied them. Yeah. And their fingerprints too. Exactly. And you get like, you know, and you could make it a little sci-fi bullshit where she like does, does she does like scotch tape on the keyboard and the, 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 whatever. Yes. We don't We've seen shit. that a million times and we yeah. accept it at this point. That's just yep. short the end at this point. So in this, she pulls out the files. I do like his little like see-through uh, future filing cabinet situation. Yeah. Um, this is where we learn that uh, Zoe Kravitz and Red Nightcrawler uh, <laughs> were killed. Yeah, Red uh, Nightcrawler. I don't remember his name. Azazel. Azazel thank you. Um, uh, were killed by Trask. Yeah. Um, cut to Logan, Professor X, and Beats show up at a house with the Maximoff sign or on the mailbox. Yeah. And for those are like, wait a second. It's like, I, I, from what I understand, the way it works was Marvel gets the rights to Scarlet Witch and Quicksilver. Yep. And Fox also gets the rights. To the, they yes. cross over for some reason. Yeah. And I think that they had like a thing where they were like, they were both in a race to do it. Mm -hmm. So... Marvel beat them by putting Quicksilver and Scarlet Witch in an Ultron. Yeah. But people prefer this Quicksilver. Yeah. And and they and it, it kind of worked out because, like, obviously we don't see Scarlet Witch in here, but Scarlet Witch, by and large, is a winner over the MCU. Yeah. And this is the better, like, this not is even the better and, Quicksilver. And no offense to, like, why did I blank on his name right now? Yeah. Kick ass, whatever. You're yeah. not going to. 
this is great. You can't yeah. beat this. Flash can't beat this. We haven't gotten a better speedster than Evan Peters Quicksilver. <laughs> Dude, and the frustrating part is in WandaVision where they were like, oh, we're just going to bring over Evan Peters from the multiverse. And we were like, oh, yes! And then they went, nah! <laughs> yeah. And I'm like, why, name why is do Dick you... Or something. It's why like, do you what are hate, we doing? <laughs> why do you hate your audience? Yeah. Fuck <laughs> man. And then it became clear, yeah, it became clear as that show went on. It's like, oh, Aaron Taylor Johnson wasn't, wasn't willing to come back. Yeah. That's what happened here. But like, all the better. Yeah. Yeah, but it's like, yeah, and you could have, ah, who knows? That, you fixed it. You, that, know, you had it, you idiots. The the MCU, by and large, I've enjoyed the MCU. There's a few like low point, like the lowest of low points. Yes. Nick Fury losing his eye to a cat. Uh, Zendaya, my friends call me MJ, uh, revealing Evan Peters' dick butts or whatever stupid name they gave him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no, that's, that one, is a low like, point. Retcon, yeah. retcon, all, retcon all of those. Get them all. All those things. Here. Yes, absolutely. Um, I completely agree. Yeah, so where the, we've said it. This is where we meet Evan Peters, uh, Quicksilver. Uh, we still haven't fucking done it better as far as like speedsters go. Uh, mm-hmm. And um, and we see that basically he's got a fucking sweet uh, basement pad where he's got yeah. like machines and all the Twinkies he can steal. Right. And all that shit. Yeah, he looks like a Ninja Turtle. He does. And every kid who didn't want to live like a fucking Ninja Turtle, man, are you fucking kidding me? Right. 10 years before their creation, but still. He's... Yeah. Yes. True. He's the inspiration for them. Yeah. Um. So the the group uh, sneaks in on a Pentagon tour. Sal, I never noticed this before, but they, while they're they're splitting off, right? And yeah. one of the, there's a little kid in the tour that's like, I need to go pee. And another kid's like, he always needs to go pee. And, and and the person conducting the tour says this. She's like, well, you're in luck because this building was built during uh, uh, segregation. And so, and it's like, oh my what? God. <laughs> oh my God. The implication being there's bathrooms for people of color and bathrooms for white people. So there's yeah. plenty of bathrooms. There's lots of bathrooms. You're in luck. There's a bathroom everywhere. Oh and my that's, okay. and that's, that's funny, true. but that's also is it a problem? True. I, I kind of love it. <laughs> oh, I wonder if I wonder if they brought it in. One, I wonder if they brought it in there because it's true. Two, knowing the age of these people, I'm wondering if like Simon Kimberg or whether whatever went on a Pentagon tour when he was a kid. It's like that's they said she, that. They said that. That was an actual thing. Yeah. Uh, uh, I don't know. I, I want to believe that's the case. Yes. Uh, Lenny Laserdisc says, really enjoy the comic and the movie. It's sort of funny how the event is only two issues. I'm all for wonderful four issue events once in a while. Keep up the great work, guys. <laughs> it is funny for as much as like this is the one. It's just two issues. Yeah. But we never. Also, I'm glad that we did this because Dark Alternate Futures is just an X-Men mainstay. Like, you it can't... really is. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's what they're tr- at the end of the day, that is what they are trying to prevent. Yeah. Like at the end of the day, they're the, the enemies the 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 X-Men's enemy is like the dark future that they don't want. Yeah. So yeah. It, it it stands to reason that every every time they fight, it's to prevent some effing crappy future. That's a really great way of articulating it. I haven't really thought about it in that context, but you're 100% right. Like that is that is part of the genetics pardon the pun of yeah. uh of the x-men that's a really good point Thank um <laughs> so yeah so they sneak in um uh bu- 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 uh in this whole prison break is fucking great every yeah, part of it's it, is, it fucking rules it's a great sequence every part mm-hmm. of the of hey. them sneaking in and uh quicksilver breaking them out and like little touches like uh quicksilver being like i need to hold your neck so you don't get whiplash <laughs> like that yeah. yeah, him him saying whiplash yeah. is so funny to me because he's just like that's him all the time. Yes. He's like everyone is too slow for what I'm trying to do. Yes, it, as somebody who gets in, gets testing and patient, like come on guys, let's let's keep it moving. Like, <laughs> I would I would suck as as Quicksilver. I would be like, oh yeah, I can't fucking do this anymore. Come on, everybody. Yeah. I also love that they're like, yeah, Wolverine just has, just knows folk. He doesn't bring it up at any point in the future, like in the future, but like I guess he just knows Quicksilver at some point. I actually really like that because it establishes that you know between Last Stand and this dystopian future, other adventures have happened. Yes, yeah. Um, we also get an implication, um, which is weird. I guess because of the way the movie's structured, there's not a good way to do this other than the way they do it, which is they're in an elevator, and Quicksilver's like, uh. 
you move metal, right? My mom used to know somebody that did that, implying yeah. that Magneto's his dad. Yeah. Wait, do we? Oh, well, we'll have to wait till Apocalypse. I think they make that explicit in Apocalypse. They do. It's okay. a, it's actually a whole thing, but yeah. only in the last like twenty minutes of the movie. Cool. Um, but like this is this is the age of I, when it's not. This is the age of if you if you say something, you mean it, and you stick to it, and you do it. We're do, yeah. we're in it. But X Men still thinks it's the age of they'll be happy with it with a reference. They don't need them. Mm -hmm thing so it's like the only time that it is implied that their that, that their, their family is in that moment and no one ever pays it off at all how would this work so the next movie would this yeah. work so instead of wolverine being like i know somebody oh no magneto's not there yet it doesn't work right right right, right. it would have had to be i was thinking like magneto's like i know somebody <laughs> it would have to be i know somebody that can break me out of prison <laughs> yes yeah but they'd have to talk to him before that or well yeah or it could be the other thing although i don't know that this quite works either with where we leave things is if professor x is like i know somebody and then <laughs> he's talking he's talking to peter and he's like we need to get your dad out of prison and peter's yeah. like i don't like my dad <laughs> right oh that'd be pretty sweet okay yeah i don't know i i like this no notes on this this whole sequence is fucking great yep. i don't even care that they like have to like why isn't Peter joining them when he could clearly just do, do anything? <laughs> In yeah, fact, why are once again can't stress this enough? Why are we getting Magneto and not just Peter? Just yeah, quick, we've so won. We have yeah. him. Like we're good. We have the best. Mag we have the best. Uh, Maximoff. Yeah, we just need just go grab a seek, bring her here. The end. Move, roll credits. <laughs> yeah, doesn't matter. Doesn't nope. matter. So this is where we get the infamous time in a bottle sequence. This is a sequence that every speedster thing has chased and failed to reach ever since. Yes. Uh, I don't even care that some of the physics of it, because he, he runs around and he'll like move bullets out of the way, but they still travel straight yes. once he's moved them, which I was like, does that, you Does move people's work? hands and then they, whatever. I don't give a shit. This fucking sequence rules. Who cares? Yeah, I don't care. I'm not. And we've had, this is like, I think in the same breath, like we've had two speedster scenes. We've had yes. what, what uh, Marvel Quicksilver can do. And it's like, oh, and I like that they're different. They're very different. Yeah. Um, It's just, this one's better. Yeah. I don't think, when was Ultron? I think Ultron was 2015, right? Was it? Oh, I think shit. it was 2015. So we haven't, um, we haven't gotten, yeah, 2015. Oh wow! Yeah, so we, so we have haven't even gotten them yet. So, so yeah. X Men beat them to the punch. Good for them. Yeah, yeah, good for them. And then also, I understand the instinct of like we need to make it different. But also, if it ain't broke, don't fucking fix it, man. <laughs> yeah, I, I love um. You know, it's funny. The last time I saw a great speedster was Eternals, but no Same. one remembers that. She's yes. great. It looks yes. great. That whole movie, that whole sequence. There's a whole sequence in Eternals where, where clearly Marvel is like, we can do the Justice League. See, I dude, if I was over it. If I'm James Gunn, I was like, listen, I don't know if they're ever going to do another Eternals. Chloe Zhao, you want to do a Justice League movie? Because clearly you get... You get it. You get it. Yeah, <laughs> you know? no. She was great. That movie was really good. Yeah, it's I like... what anybody says. I like that movie. Like, I'll write it, but you get to... Exactly, but you make it look like that. Because yeah. no Marvel movie had looked like that mm -hmm. but like in a long time before and never since. Yes. Yeah. It just looks mag magnificent. It's yeah, a yeah, good yeah. looking movie. And it, and it, I listen as a comic fan, I'm yeah. bummed to admit to you all that the speedsters we got right are Quicksilver and Mercari. Yeah. <laughs> I see. So I'm bummed about that. All right. Yeah. In, in a world where there is a Flash movie. Yeah. Well, I agree. At least they don't have fucking Evan Peter saving babies or some shit, <sighs> putting on microwaves for reasons. That yeah, I the CG understand. looks better in this than in a movie almost ten years later. Well, I want to say I don't have it in front of me. Somebody in the chat can let me know. I want to say it took them like a week or more to film this sequence alone. That sounds right. Because yeah. it is, it's comp. There's a lot of, and it's, and that's what makes it work is all the little yes. details, the wind in his face, the like. Right. Fuck this. This. Ooh, ooh, it's so good. Um. Yeah. We should at the end of this, we should kind of not just rank our favorite movies, but our favorite. Cause I think it's like like this scene, the nightcrawler breaking into the White House scene. Like there's a few, there's uh, it's probably a Wolverine Berserker moment in there. It's like best X moments. We'll see. It, yeah, I like that. Best X. Yeah. Best of best of X. Best of X. Um, we'll have a whole award ceremony and everything. We'll call Evan Peters. You want to show up? We'll hand you an award. Um <laughs> Uh, but 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 so uh, they save Magneto. Um, oh yeah. Oh wait. Uh, on the on the flight to Paris, we learned that both 
not only Red Nightcrawler and uh, Zoe Kravitz are dead, but Banshee is dead. Like we fucking we killed everyone he left with. Yeah, we nuked. We nuked basically the entire first class. We nuked class. Vaughn's first class. Like yeah. Emma's gone. Yeah, Banshee's yeah. gone. Uh, we also learned that Magneto didn't kill JFK. He was trying to save JFK, which I think was a smart little. Oh yeah. Bullet. Well, they wanted to do the the, the magic bullet. Yeah. But uh, and also they said, but then they go so far as to be like, no, he wanted to save JFK because JFK was a mutant. Yeah, I think that's smart because okay. not that you know, um, it's such a American cultural touchstone. This isn't the same. Everybody, I'm not saying it's the same, but it would be weird. Like thirty years from now, if somebody was like, Magneto did nine eleven. It's like, don't, <laughs> don't, don't do that. Don't. <laughs> Don't, don't do that. Don't <laughs> don't do that. Oh, by yeah. saving a little bit, like he he didn't kill JFK. That's a he national tra it. tragedy that we're still processing as a country. He right. tried to stop it. It's like that's a good good choice. <laughs> yeah, yeah, no. <laughs> you know, did nine eleven? Yeah. Um, I mean, you could, do it. you could do that story if you wanted to. I just don't think it's a good. I, I just don't, don't want you to. I just, just don't, don't do that. that. Don't do that. So on the flight, uh, Professor X and Magneto kiss and make up, and they play chess because that, that's all we wanted to do, man. We just wanted to play chess. Just play some chess, guys. Uh, Trask is at the Peace Accords, and I should have looked this stuff up. I am not as uh, versed in this history as I probably should be. My mm -hmm. This is the end of Vietnam. We're ending Vietnam. Paris yeah. Peace Accords. That's what this is. Yeah. So um, Trask is at the Peace Accords to sell Sentinels to communists because the United States weirdly it's like no we don't want that weapon every other weapon we want but this one uh, uh no thanks weird yeah <laughs> out of character for the united states um as he's giving his pitch he has this little like uh dingus that's a mutant detector and it goes off because mystique is there disguised as one of the i believe it's one of the vietnamese generals yep um and mystique is about to kill trask and everybody shows up uh, and cutting it super close, like way right down to the wire. It, like, yeah. Uh, what? Like you almost failed. It, it, it was just, oh, let's just get, let Wolverine visit the past for a little while. Yes. And then uh, we'll go back to dying from Sentinels. Like, that's you know what? That is a weird choice, right? Like don't send him back right before it happened. Send him like a year before, send him before the events of first class. Yeah. Let <laughs> him prep. Yeah. Like send him back in like Mystique. Right. Listen, stay with Professor X, all right? Magneto, fucking cool it, all right, man? Well, I guess because then you'd have like Kitty for a year going, <laughs> uh, he's just uh, he's just in like you know Chelsea eating the ham sandwich. It's like mm. mm -hmm. Kitty's like, oh, I don't know what's happening in the in the past, but I hope it's gonna save the future. Yeah, I guess that's the logic of it, is yeah. you don't want her <laughs> waiting around and you don't know if you go farther back, maybe the butterfly effect won't. It's still 50 years, yeah. man. Come on. It's like the it's like in Harry Potter with the time turner, you know? It's like yeah. otherwise it's like we could we could fix a lot of things, but you need a lot of patience going like, okay, I yeah. gotta spin this effing turner I like another think... hundred thousand yes. times. I also think that's a good way to do it because the time travel only exists in that one movie, and they established that everything that they did is established earlier in the movie. Yes. They're not changing anything, they're no. doing the thing they did before. Exactly. If you all thought we were gonna get out of this conversation without me and sal talking about a paradoxes and time travel <laughs> uh, you're wrong i gotta bring it up mm -hmm. okay so ba -ba -ba, mystique's trying to kill trask or here show up um wolverine sees striker and has a full-on meltdown full-on panic attack <laughs> i love it i think that's really fun he has a panic attack and i'm like yeah that's that's in keeping i kind of wish we did more with that because like wolverine yeah. is not necessarily here but just throughout the franchise because obviously wolverines are big are our favorite boy Yep. And he's cool and he does everything right all the time. And I do like the idea that like he is tough, he is unbeatable. But man, you bring up Weapon X, if he sees he's gonna Striker, he's going to fucking... <laughs> yeah. Not going to go great for him. He's going to crap his pants. And uh, you know what? That's fine. Like, I like that. Although, you know, it's, it's, it's a problem because he reacts to him like, oh no! And we're yeah. like, oh no, did he like not like American Pie? Like, yeah. What's the problem? <laughs> Like I don't know that I movie I don't know that's William Stryker because yes. he looks nothing like him. Nope. Nope. Um, and <laughs> Magneto, being the ultimate pragmatist, is like, okay, so Mystique's the one that causes. I'll just kill my good friend Mystique. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I just got through complaining about all of our mutant brothers and sisters who have yes. been murdered, but but I'll kill. I mean, I'll kill her. Yeah, yeah. I'll yeah, kill I mean, one of our own. I don't give a shit. No. Um, 
uh cam in the in the super chat says magneto did line 11 as a mark miller pitch waiting to happen dude the, yeah. like we have ruined some future version of the x-men because of this like i promise you it's out there on the world now yep <gasps> oh my god um listen if frank miller frank miller had thought of it during that what was it uh holy now, Air batman era <laughs> only if he would have he would have had to change nationalities for magneto though he would yeah. not have had magneto do that mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. uh anyway Sorry, everybody. Um, <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so he tries to kill Mystique. This is a cool scene. Yes. Where Magneto has a gun and then Beast tackles him and then Magneto still uses the gun with his magnet powers. Right. It's, it's pretty fucking cool. And he gets Mystique in the leg uh, and there's a big fight between Beast and Eric. Oh, mm -hmm. it's pretty cool. Mystique yes. escapes. Um, Wolverine oh, no. is not only flipping out in the past, he's flipping out in the future and he scratches Kitty. Oh no! Oh, yeah, which apparently this is what leads to them incorporating Rogue in the Rogue. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. She can take but powers, yada yada. Yeah, but I do like it without Rogue because it it, it introduces yet another ticking time yes. element to it. It's like Kitty is dying. Yeah, but this is and this was the moment where I brought up your note of like, is there time? How long has Kitty <laughs> been here? <laughs> right. Like, yeah, it, it's bad enough that she's been dealing with this the whole time, but also now she's bleeding to death. Yes. Like, yeah Oof. yeah um uh yeah so uh nixon asked to be debriefed trask is in the room which yeah. i have questions about so i guess this is a few days later at least mm -hmm. sure um and also <laughs> sure. why is he in the room i don't know why is trask he's not a government official he's just a weapons contractor they they forget that a lot in these movies where like not these movies like x-men movies but movies yeah. in general where they're like no weapons contractors are basically just senators and they're allowed in cl like closed door meetings with like elected officials and i'm like yeah. maybe that's true but also like i don't know it breaks the illusion a little bit yeah yeah but anyway he's there to sell them on sentinels um and he tells them because there's footage of uh Mystique, Mystique leaving Magneto and all that stuff. So we see that we've got a metal guy, and Nixon's like, "What about the metal guy?" And he's like, "No, it's made of sp quote space age polymers, and there's no metal in them." Which I'm pretty sure there's a big giant fucking engine on the their chest that would have to be metal. But you know, whatever. Man. Yeah, no, no, no. It's a, they have a hard time getting the metals out in like the not too distant future of X Men Two. Yeah. All right, fine. Yeah. Um. So, and, and I do like that we're just like, listen, this is the X-Men 70s. They've got future tech. We're able to get full robots. Doesn't matter. Um, exactly. <laughs> uh, the other question I have is we see that they have, it's not just plastic guns, but plastic bullets, which I have questions about. At this that. point, it's just like they're, they're, they're thinking, it, it's weird because like they're thinking too much, but not thinking about the right things. Yeah. They're just focusing on so much. And it's like, dude, don't like, don't. Yeah, so Mystique confronts Magneto in a train station, um, and uh, again, everybody's flipping out uh, them getting uh, Mystique's DNA. I don't think scraping off a little blood off the pavement's going to cut it. Um, no. But, but also, yeah. Mystique's bled at some point between now and 50 years in the future, right? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but we weren't looking for it then. Okay, all right. <laughs> I just feel like I just feel like I just feel like this is going to be a problem down the road. Um, I, I'm, I'm, I'm with you. Uh, I do like I do like in the comic that um, that just that two. Obviously, we revisit a ton of times, but just that two issues. It's they they raise the specter of we don't even know if this is going to change our timeline. It might be an alternate timeline. <laughs> and, um, yeah. and like we don't know the ramifications of this. And then it ends and we actually don't know. Yeah, Did they save the future. We don't know. There's no way to know. Yeah, that would be very unsatisfying. Oh yeah, it wouldn't work. <laughs> movie, but but uh, I do think if, in that two issue comic run, I think it's it's very. Oh yeah, no, in the comic, it's like yeah. Um. So back of the X mansion, um, uh, Professor X starts being on it. His powers are coming back, but he can't walk. Wolverine's able to talk him into not taking his uh, heroin substitute. Uh, yeah. That is the drug that makes him walk. Right. Um. Trask. Uh, we get a scene where T Trask is telling Stryker his vision um, that um, uh, about that mutants will unite humanity and um, and it will cause lasting peace. And like, listen, uh, you know, not to get political or anything. Apparently, this is a controversial take. I don't think genocide is a good pathway to peace. If your goal is to create peace, 
in say like a region like the Middle East, I don't know that genocide's gonna cut it, my guy. Yeah, it's it, it, we we if only we had some empirical evidence to support such a such a hypothesis. Yeah, uh, unfortunately, want... in the whole of human history, we do not, so we have to only speculate. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I think um, in this case, you know, only psychopaths have that idea. You know, it's yeah. like Ozymandias had the same notion. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's just and like if you create. As somebody, I feel pretty confident as somebody that lives in America, I can right. tell you, if you create or found your nation on a violent, suppressive culture, that shit is going to permeate and have ramifications uh, yes. for everybody. Yeah, yeah. We couldn't, yeah, yeah. Anyway. I was going to say, we couldn't even unite over uh, a non-human entity mm -hmm. uh, in the form of a virus. Yeah. So uh, I doubt we are going to unite over annihilating an entire species of people who are yes. indistinguishable from ourselves. Exactly. And, you know, and eventually, and it's whatever. Yeah, I know. Once it's you get stupid. through, once you get through, once you, if the genocide people are right, you think they're going to stop? Right. The... <laughs> well, every, t that's going to be, you know, to, ever, to, to a hammer, everything's a nail. Yes. Uh, to, to a psychopath, genocide is the answer for everything. Mm -hmm. Um once you finish your one genocide, you know, you're going to still have problems because like, that's not a solution. So yeah. you're only going to keep suggesting genocide yeah, yeah, yeah. until eventually you're completely out of people. Anyway, the genocide is bad is the stance of only. That's the answers. lesson of the episode for <laughs> yeah. today, folks. Uh, anyway. So, uh, bu -bu -bu -bu, um, uh, Professor X's powers are coming back. They dust off Cerebro to find Mystique. Doesn't go great. The little sensors blow up and shit. And uh, this is a good scene. This is because uh, James McAvoy and Hugh Jackman and Patrick Stewart all like fucking A plus actors. Um, so yeah. uh, Wolverine gives Professor X a pep talk. Yeah, man, I'm just thinking about it. It's like, God, this scene really works. So, so Professor yeah. X goes into Wolverine's mind and he's like, dude, there's a lot of bullshit in here. And he's like, and, and Hugh Jackman, his delivery here is great. He's like, yeah, look past that. <laughs> Ask me. Yeah, no, no, no. I know me. That's bad. Go look past that. Right. And find you. Find find you in there. And there's a scene with uh McAvoy and Patrick Stewart. Uh yeah. where basically Patrick Stewart is like, listen, man. And and I think this is another thing that benefits this movie over other X movies is I don't know it's if if it watching again, I don't know if it always threads the needle perfectly, but there is a theme in the idea of you're not defined by your mistakes. You're not defined by if you're on a certain trajectory, you can change that shit. Mm -hmm. um, Mystique, you don't need to be a villain. You know what I mean? That doesn't need to be your story. You can change that. And that's basically what Patrick yeah. Stewart says to James McAvoy, and it's enough right. to get him to be like, cool, I'm back in the saddle. Exactly. No, I love it. I, yeah. It's a great scene. I remember them teasing it. You know, uh, mm -hmm. I think they were, there was a Q and a a while back where they were like, is there a scene with the two professor X's? And they're like, I think, you know, that like, that's something that everybody wanted to see. And we were yeah. really excited to make. And you know, it's, it's great. I love it. I, I love the idea of like a younger version of someone get face to face with like the older version of themselves and being like, and, and you know, obviously the person who's the hardest on professor X in this movie is professor X. Yeah. Uh, maybe Magneto because he's but he's just such a dick. How could you yes. do anything he says? Magneto's you know? kind of hard on everybody. <laughs> well, and he's such a he's such a deflector. You know, everything is a, everything everything is everybody else's fault. Yeah. Um, but uh, but to have one forgive oneself, that's mm -hmm. like the moment where he's like, oh, like I'm able to forgive myself, even if it's like a alternate future version of myself that's projected through the mind of a maniac. I'm still going to take a lesson from this. Yeah. And it's great. Cause it's like, that's there. It, the, it starts with him. It starts with him forgiving himself and then he can help everyone else. And it's yeah. like, that's, that's really cool that in this silly movie about time travel, we're able to get that moment that actually literally happens as opposed yeah. to a person who just looks in the mirror and has a soliloquy. This is like a, that, but more fun. And it's, yeah, and it's a good and it's use dope. of the time travel conceit of of the of that idea of like, are you forced to um, continue these cycles? And I like the way you framed it as as somebody for for giving themselves. And because you know, you you whenever you do like a Q and A episode or whatever, it's there's inevitably like, what would you say to eighteen year old you? Right. And it's always some some variation of like, yeah, all this bullshit you think is like the worst thing. It's not, man. So fucking buck up. <laughs> and yeah and yeah. Uh, you'll have perspective one day and yeah. you know just just tr try to it'll it's impossible to have it there's a great line from like uh i think it's everybody's free to wear sunscreen where like it's like uh you know 
uh, enjoy the power and beauty of your youth. Oh, never mind. You, <laughs> you'll never, you won't appreciate it until they faded. And it's like, yeah, like mm -hmm. you could tell a young person or your, the youngest version of yourself, like all this wisdom you've, you've acquired and they still won't listen yeah. because they can't, because they have to make those mistakes in order to be a person who can give wisdom. Yeah. And, and you have to earn it. Yeah. You, you got to earn, earn it. Uh, earn, the, earn that wisdom. And, you know, if you just went back and did it to paradox and we're going to, I'll bring it up in a minute, but that's right. we're not, we're not at my paradox questions yet. No. So, uh, bu, 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 um, yeah. So, meanwhile, Magneto uh, is using the very train tracks. Uh, at some point, he goes and saves his helmet from the museum. It's a gr it's the best helmet in these movies. Well, it, I also think this might be the best version of the costume. Easily. Yeah. Yeah. No. Because it, it is one of those. It's it's like the comics, but you know, it tones down some of the goofy stuff. Like at yep. the end of, um, it's cool to see the comic book costume at the end of first class but it, look, it looks goofy it looks bad yeah so this is a good you know basically getting all the elements in there but he's yes. pulling the, the the train tracks up and incorporating them into the sentinels which i feel like is a bit of a stretch of the level of my understanding of his abilities but fine completely and, and also like <sighs> It, 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 the CG isn't very good, and yeah, the sequence is the diciest the CG gets in the movie. Yeah, and it's just yeah. kind of—it looks like a cartoon, and it's just like, uh, not that that really matters, but also, like, can Magneto reprogram a robot? Does he know how yeah. to do that? He's just because he's not just—if it's one thing, if he's like, I run metal through the machine yeah. so I can puppet it. No, he's in there like r making circuits out of railroad ties, and I'm like, no, yeah, that's a stretch. Um. Uh, cause, cause, uh, my, the impression we've always been given these movies is Magneto's powers are vast, yes, but they're also like, they're, it's, it's what's, they're not like nuanced. Uh, I no. can lift really big things, but it's like, you're pulling this train track down to like a molecular low level yeah. and reconstituting what type of metal it is and how it functions <laughs> within the thing. Like that's, right. that's like surgical, man. Like, I don't know. Is that how your powers work? You have um, to know how it works. Yeah. In order to, to accomplish it, you can't go, I really want it to do those things. And so because I'm an Omega level mutant, it just does. Yes. Yes. Um, so um, now is the time they're, they're uh, back at the mansion. Uh, uh, Professor X uses Cerebro to talk through other people to Mystique, which again is a stretch of what my understanding of what Cerebro can do, but that's yeah, fine. Yeah, but don't forget he did that also in X-Men 1, where he like puppeted uh, Sabretooth and stuff. Great point. And also in X2, we established that if he thinks too hard, he'll murder everybody <laughs> on the planet. So, oh, yeah. Cerebro, that's like Cerebro's, a theme in another oh, movie. Yeah, Cerebro is actually kind of a problem um, yeah. that we should talk about, but whatever. Um, Mystique's not uh, backing down. And this is when Beast decides to reveal that the TV has been playing, uh, the, the Trask is doing a big Sentinel de demonstration at DC. It's like, well, then we didn't need to bother with this shit, man. If we go there, that's where everybody will be. Yes. Oh, my God. Anyway, um, uh, Hank suggests that there, maybe there's nothing they can do to change the future. Mm -hmm. And Professor X goes to the, the theme of it, which, you know, I actually agree. This sh shouldn't work time travel wise, but the theme of it about changing, I think is meaningful. So sure. Um, uh, I jumped ahead. Apparently this is when Magneto breaks out his helmet. Sorry, everybody. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm sorry. I, uh, I was just like, yeah, that, that sounds right. And then, um, cause I remember when he's pulling up the tracks, I thought he was in full outfit. I guess he wasn't anyway. Yeah, no, he was, he was just, he was, I think he was like dressed like a regular guy. Yeah. Um, so in the future, the Sentinels, the future Sentinels are arriving to fuck everybody up. We're getting to our climax. Um, in the past, Nixon reveals the Sentinels, uh, and everybody like gets up and salutes for some reason, like the Sentinels yeah. are some general or whatever. Well, because uh, I remember in Iron Man 2 when they all did that, remember when the robots also saluted, yeah, and then everyone did it. Well, yeah, but yeah, but like, yeah, but the, the robots don't salute, everybody just salutes the robots. No, the robot, yeah, I know, I'm just saying, you know, yeah, we love our weapons in America. Um, I actually don't, I still I don't know that this was net, it's cool. But I don't know why Eric moves the baseball stadium around. Well, so he can house. sever. That's what that way we don't. Because okay, you you attack the White House, the National Guard, the arm, everything's coming. Yeah, fair. So okay. now you can have an intimate scene with characters that don't like in, have to interact with like the arm. You don't have to like have a scene where it's like we have to fight the army. We got to have more mutants in here. Like no, no, no. It's just yeah. he, he he does it because he does it in that awful X Men movie that Brian Singer didn't direct. And he wants to do it right. <laughs> yeah, and he wants to prove he could do it better. And also because uh, we need to keep it 
contained to yeah. only the main characters. That works. That's a good explanation. It also looks better. It, yeah, it looks cool. Yeah, I really, I don't know if I have it late. I like Michael Fassbender a lot in this movie. Yeah, um, I think he's really good. I think Magnus is a really compelling antagonist in this. Uh, and it made me like, fuck, I miss Michael Fassbender movies. And then I was like, oh, fuck, he's in the new David Fincher movie. Oh, really? Awesome. Oh, yeah, there's a David Fincher movie coming out in November oh. uh, that he's the lead, and it's like fuck, great because he's so good in this. Um, <laughs> like it, it's it's crazy how much Magneto sucks objectively, right? Like and what a piece yet, of shit he is. Yeah, and yet I'm kind of always compelled by him. Like I'm always, I'm just that's, always like, well, dude, that's the power of the acting in this movie. It's yeah. just like, yeah, like I don't, I don't know if I even find Young Professor X terribly sympathetic and compelling. Yeah but McAvoy sells it. Like, I don't, you know, the only one who's really like, it's, it's funny because everybody wants to like, you know, throw Nicholas Holt to fucking like your best actor parade. Yeah. I don't really think he's dynamic at all in any way, but he's especially lost in this movie against mm -hmm. everybody else. Yeah. And like, you know, he might as well be nobody. And he's Nicholas Holt who pretty good, who could probably carry his own franchise. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it, it is. Yeah, it is interesting how like we clearly like Beast a lot, but he, like you said, he is a little lost in this movie. And um, but I think that's only because everybody else is so is so much stronger. Yeah, everybody else is just yeah. just elevated to the point where it's like Nicholas Holt is overshadowed. Well, and we've said this ever doing the show. The holy trinity of these oh, X, yeah. X franchise is Professor X, Magneto, and Wolverine. That that, that those are the three characters they give a shit about one hundred percent. And then they try to like they're really trying with like Mystique and hank but they just don't care as much about them as they do wolverine and magneto and professor x yeah um, yeah that's right so in the futures in the future the sentinels are tagging x-men uh eric and storm this is actually pretty fucking cool they blow yeah. up a future blackbird to stop the sentinels the one weird thing about it is what takes magneto down is a piece of shrapnel which is like it's a it's thing supposed to be ironic <laughs> I guess it is. Yeah, that that's funny. That occurred to uh, that did not occur to me that it was ironic. Um, yeah. you know, it's like, oh, a piece of metal slipped through and it got you. Yeah. Like, yeah, I guess that's true. Cuz I think the implication is like it's cool like he's throwing it at the Sentinels and throwing parts at them and then Storm uses her lightning to blow it up yeah. and then like every blows up and everybody blocks it and Magneto like stops the shrapnel the last minute. Yeah. And what I got my implication, maybe this is me doing the movies heavy lifting for them is <laughs> Magneto's older. He's not at the top of his game. Because right. I think Michael Fassbender Magneto would have stopped the shrapnel before it hit any of his friends. <laughs> yeah, definitely. definitely. Um, and he gets a little sapped by it, which is a bummer for future Magneto. Yeah, yeah. Um, <laughs> but, it, and, and it do, but it does give us, and I'm jumping ahead a little bit, but it does give mm. us the one thing, I, the one scene we get of Magneto, future Magneto Professor X, and I do wish we got a little bit more of that because we yes. get this one moment where uh magneto's like fuck man all those years fighting that was fucking bullshit right and professor is like yeah i love that was. <laughs> yeah i love that and i i think it would have been cool because i think that there's like this expectation that um magneto in the future like it would have been neat to establish there is virtually no difference in strength and power between um the two magnetos yeah and it would have been really cool to show you that like only through the power of friendship and training does older Magneto become so much vastly more powerful than the than the Fastbender Magneto. Yeah. But Fastbender Magneto drops a goddamn stadium on the city and, and he has a strike of sweat and old Magneto gets stabbed with a piece of metal that's <laughs> part of like, I think only a thousand pieces. So I, I don't know. It just feels like, oops. Yeah. So it's just, it's a shame because like it would have been neat to show those two, like to yeah. show the, the parallel. But again, I don't think they're really thinking about it. And I <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> they're kind of like we're just trying to make this goddamn movie happen yeah and we're trying to because we're not making a new movie we're we're trying to restart an entire franchise yeah we're so. trying to combine two eras of this franchise into a new era of this franchise that's exactly right <laughs> um so mystique has snuck into uh, nixon hides in a bunker she snuck into the bunker she tries to kill him but is stopped uh yep. magneto just yanks the bunker out of the white house which is fucking Love it. cool Great, i also think that's the other thing that helps these movies is i think Singer specifically has such a clear vision of how to use Magneto's abilities in a cinematic way. Yes. Because Magneto always gets the coolest use of mutant powers. Every single one of these fucking movies. Like, I think every time I've tried to stop and be like, that's a cool use of powers. It's almost always fucking Magneto. It's Magneto yeah. and then Quicksilver in this movie. <laughs> yeah. 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 Oh, my God.
No. Because yeah, because it just yanks the thing out. I'm like, fuck, Magneto's. God damn it. Um, it was cool. Yeah. And then Magneto does what he does. He turns <laughs> the cameras on him, and he's like, "Time for it's time, everybody." <laughs> I love that he turns the cameras on him. Like that's what he is, the showboating asshole. Oh my god! While he's doing it, there's a montage of other mutants, including Toad, who's still wearing his stupid goggles while he's flipping burgers at a fast food joint, just trying to hide. Uh, yeah. just trying to hide that he's not Ray Park. And it's also like, it's so funny because they try to have it both ways of like, do people know about mutants? Do they not? And it's I don't know, man. I guy... works at my fast food place that looks like a lizard man with goggles on all the time. Right, like he, yeah, yeah, he eats flies. I think he eats flies. He yeah. literally is bouncing around all over the place. Like, trust me, I, I'm, I am not, I am not fooled. Yeah. So, uh, Mystique goes out disguised as Richard Nixon uh, to distract Magneto. I um, liked it. I thought it was. Um, I, I know it wasn't because we have the moment where it's like, remember who you are. Seen later, yeah. but I thought that was her being like no let me show you like what humanity should be like you know because she was like i'll sacrifice myself and yeah. it's a great moment for a minute for a minute you're thinking oh man nixon stepped up yeah and then you're like oh no he's hiding back there that's yeah that, that's that's really cool well um, and that's, they that's do, i don't know how intentional it is but they do have a moment where when mystique i i just think about this moment when she's going in his trask hitting his trask yes the only clue that you get at first that it's mystique is she looks yeah. at the secretary and she's like that's a nice scarf and the secretary like pauses like that's a Thanks. nice compliment that i didn't expect yeah that you so, never give and this it's this weird so that's the mystique we're dealing with where she is kind of being the best version of people when yes. she's portraying them yeah i gotta love that yeah i like that too um um also once you know uh I, I think Jennifer Lawrence is really talented. I do think she gets lost a little bit in this movie because she's more of a plot mechanism yes. than a character. But uh, also, I credit where it's due. She has to do like, a lot of run around and action scenes, and that costume doesn't look terribly supportive. And so every no. time she's running around in the blue makeup, I feel bad for her. I'm like, can you, can you guys... Yeah, but don't forget, she's also in a, <laughs> but she is in a movie where uh, she like literally hauls off and sprints at someone completely stark naked and then does an entire action sequence later on. What um, movie is that? Is that Red Sparrow or whatever? No, 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 no. It's that. Uh, it's the. It's the. It's that date movie. It's the most recent like sex comedy she was in with. Oh the- yeah, 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 yeah. Well, listen, man. If I fucking fuck it, if I had Jennifer Lawrence's body, you could stop. Me, Be all right? over the place. Yeah. I'm just, I'm just saying, it just doesn't look like fuck it. Oh no, it's not. It's really it frustrating. Yeah, it's, it, it, it can't be. Well, plus you're like, you know, it's not just she's blue. She's got yeah. blue, she's got like crap on her that they have yes. to glue to her. You do any running, it's gonna fly off, and you get yeah. and then it's another ten hours in the makeup chair. It's yeah, just, yeah. It's why she resented and hated being this character. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I think after this, she's always like has X uniform, which you could do. That was a Mystique has an outfit in the comics. You didn't need to do this. I know. <laughs> she yeah. could make clothes for herself. Um, yeah. Anyway. Um, yeah, so uh, she shoots Magneto in the neck, which I guess in this universe isn't fatal. And um, well, I think uh, she's trying to kill him, but she just fucks up. Well, but even that, like even the slow mo, even if you want to say she's not trying to kill him, like it goes through. I if you go through this part of my, there's an artery right here. You go through right there. I don't. I'll die. I'm, yeah, I think I'm done. Yeah, it's fair. Um, <laughs> uh, X gets inside Mystique's um, head and talks her out of killing Trask, uh, which fixes everything. Um, fixes everything cause, yeah. Cause hope. Yeah. Which is fine. Uh, don't have to worry about anything happening in the next 50 years that might bring us back to the future we were in or creating something worse. Don't worry. Right? Cause it. you know that they like, you know, they do fight apocalypse one day and yes. some of them must remember that. Like might want to mention that before it, before it happens. Yeah. <laughs> but, but uh, real quick, here's a couple things you need to know. Uh, exactly. Apocalypse. <laughs> Dark Phoenix, wait, hold on. Uh, Striker, wait. Yeah, yeah. Like, oh, by the way, is that Wolverine guy with you? Because he might, uh, he oh, might I... really appreciate not having to suffer his entire life. Yeah, and we get. Uh, I should mention. I kind of skipped over it. Wolverine's not in more of the fight, which is a because he's got the bone claws, and we get about. He tries to stab a sentinel, it doesn't work. Yep. But as a kid growing up in the '90s, seeing this movie, it's like I just want to see Wolverine fucking climb stab. a giant ass sentinel and stab the shit out of it with his claws. That's all I fucking want. This one's for you, Morph. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I want that line. We, what's the context of it? Who knows? Who cares? <laughs> he has lots of friends. Yeah. Um, so um, Professor X lets Magneto escape. You mentioned this. Uh, Magneto's like, they'll kill me if they catch me. And X lets him escape because he's a fucking sadist. I know. I'm like, what are you doing? 
Oh my god, fucking! I like Michael Fassbender too, but let them take him, man. He's making yeah. he's a problem for you. <laughs> he, he he will only be a problem. You only needed him in a dark future. You just avoided. <laughs> he he uh, took a dire situation you're in and made it like 10 times worse. He literally like, made the movie an hour longer because yeah. he's just, he's just that much of a dickhead. You were going to like fast forward your dark timeline by like decades because of the shit Magneto pulled, like let them, let them take him. Yeah. But I guess it deals with the theme, hope he can change and all that shit, which like I I'm for, but also what's the body count going to be before he changes, you know? And it would have been nice if like we get at the end and like Magneto was there at the school, but he's not. Oh, that would have been fucking cool. You're fucking right. That would have been great. Right. And he treated it like it was nothing like, oh, hey, Logan. And it's like, whoa, whoa I'm sorry. Yes. Fuck, oh. That would have been cool. Mystique's not there either. Fucking no. missed opportunity. Yeah, oh. You could have gotten Rebecca Ramin. That would have been kind of cute. That would have been fucking cool. God damn it. Still like this movie, but that would have been Still like it, but great. just, yeah. Well, you know what it is? God. I feel like they definitely would have thought of it if it was like a true swan song. Like if it was Brian Singer going like, I'm going to come back. I'm going to do one more X-Men movie. Yeah. Just to kind of cap off the franchise. Maybe like if it was on the cusp of acquisition by Marvel, it was like, we're just, we're making one more, just throwing everything at the wall yeah. and, and and give it the send off. It is the send off for me. This is the last X-Men movie. It, yeah. It's like, it's, I, I'm with you like this and Logan. They're, they're thinking it's about like, too many things. That's like, it. That was, that's your out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But I think that they're, they're thinking about too many things and there's too many things in the air. And so I imagine they're just like, yeah, we would have done that if I had time to even think about it. Yeah. Oh man. Anyway, uh, in the future, speaking of Logan wakes up in the X mansion where he sees Anna Paquin for like 10 seconds. So if you haven't <laughs> seen the rope cut, this is all they're bringing in. I don't even think she gets a fucking line. Hell no. no uh, she doesn't. Kelsey Grammer's beast is there. That's cute. <laughs> it's so uh, crazy. He, yeah. he goes, hello, Logan. <laughs> <laughs> like, what are you, what are you laughing for? You crazy person. <laughs> crazy asshole exactly. um, really oh weird. my god uh and everyone is there including uh uh gene and scott famka jansen awesome. uh, and um uh, i just left my brain uh james marsden james, james marsden showing up for like 10 seconds and i actually think they play this really well because like we have to we've once again just like the wolverine <laughs> We've really leaned into Logan having to kill uh, Gene mm. in, in Last Stand. And so, like, Logan's, like, about ready to touch her face. And Scott's like, whoa, what are you hold, doing? Hold <laughs> but I like that it's not – we're not right back to rivalry. Like, Logan's just like, oh, fuck, you're back too. That's actually really great. Like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, how nice. Yeah. And I'm like, ah, oh. Yeah, it, it, that was so cool. Yeah. I, I loved it. Yeah. It's a good, it's a good moment, which could have only been made better. We got Rebecca Romaine and fucking Magneto back for like a minute. Yeah. I do. I guess this is as good a time as any, but like time travel paradoxes, this doesn't fucking work. Like this doesn't, you can't, cause he, well, here's the other thing. This is, this is how I should jump off of it, about it. <laughs> Think about the nightmare that is Logan's brain. Okay. <laughs> because not only has Logan had his memories erased and fucked with by weapon X, uh, not only does he have all the trauma from that history, he has all the trauma of the dystopian future. Now he's in a utopian future, one presumes, yep. that he doesn't remember. No. He's going to no, he, he missed it. out all of that stuff, yeah. Because he even says to Professor X, like, yeah, so my memory of history is a little fuzzy. Can you yeah. update me? Like, fucking shit. From 1973. Well, the other thing is, this is also, th these movies always go like, oh, and Professor X is God. Yes. Because he, he got on made too. Yes. But because he's just such a such a good telepath, he remembers the alternate future that he saved. Yes. No, you don't. Yeah. But uh, whatever, who cares? But yeah, no, I, I like that Wolverine, like, lost it. And that he's like, because for him, I would take it too. And here's why. Yeah. Because all I remember is misery and like, and, and death. And then I get to appreciate the future that I saved. Yeah. For about five years until the Logan universe and everything's like. That's a different, that's a different reality. Yeah. Okay. I, yeah. I'll accept that. But that's, that's kind of the thing is that this is where thematically, I think it works. I really enjoy this movie, but just like, eh, you you've erased 
the the apparatus to send you back you've yeah. erased and the yes. reason to send you back you've erased so you would have never gone back to begin with oh yeah and so it just creates the, this is where paradox is coming and stuff it's like you wouldn't have gone back to change the thing that yeah. you went back to do and i've tried to think about like because i do like these stories yeah um and you want the stakes if you're just changing that for an alternate reality yeah i think flash the new flash movie uh, everybody uh you <laughs> record i'm about ready to give my one bit of praise for the flash movie yeah i do think it has the right idea in that you don't change the path you change the past in a way that it, it, nothing in that interim changes other than now you have a new tool mm -hmm. to change moving forward right yes, so in that movie cool. i guess his dad is on the camera which he'd have a receipt from god that movie's so fucking stupid um <laughs> I mean, he doesn't even bother to look for the person that actually killed his mom. He you don't just, get to find out. Like, I mean, we know it's Thawne, but only because we read comic books. And even oh then, like, they, they invented an evil Flash that's also himself. So it's like, is it Thawne? Do you even know? Yeah, and it could have been. You could have made that be the one that killed it. Whatever. Yeah. Um, no. You, no. you have it out. You're like, this future is so bad. <laughs> I'm going to go kill your mom to make that the future that i live in you fucked up the future so bad i'm gonna unfuck up the future you know what yeah, i mean like that yeah, absolutely no, it doesn't matter that's not but my point is the idea of like erasing everything that went up uh, affects it, it it changed it, everything you created you created a paradox yeah well and, and i think that's just like no you created an alternate timeline yeah like no one like the, the difference being if you are the one who's committing the time travel you remember the previous timeline that you were shunted into. Sure, sure. <laughs> I think the other thing, you, I, I, um, just to give context for where my brain is at in this, I was watching a video that was talking about like what is the end of the universe, like what, like, right. like the, 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 um, is there like a like a physical uh, barrier of the universe, like can you right. go any further, kind of a thing, or does it just keep going? Yeah, and, and where they landed on it was a little bit complicated for me, but where they where they landed on was this idea that if the universe, the universe as we know it, obviously there's an observable universe where we can't see past that, but we don't know yeah. what's past what we can see. Right. If it goes on infinite, the way they described it was kind of like multiverse. That it's if there's a non-zero chance of something happening, mm -hmm. then in somewhere it is happening. Right, um, right, right, right. And and so that got me thinking when I was watching this movie, I was like, what you could say is that times is cyclical. So when this universe ends, it starts again. And so yeah. what you're functionally doing is the next time around, we don't go through this shit again. Right. Which is all, almost all Moira. Die, but like the next, but at least we don't have to relive this nightmare uh, the next time the universe is around. Comes exactly. around. Exactly. Yeah. Does that make sense? I don't yeah, know. If, I, but, yeah. I get that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if, um, I mean, this movie makes no attempt to explain one way or another. Yeah. So, well, and of course you get the, I'll say this, say, talk about this in X factor. Like apparently James Cameron or uh, Brian Singer talked to James Cameron and other people about, time travel and you always hear those stories about like we talked to theoretical physicists about that and it's like know. did you because it doesn't the I know doesn't prove out in the work <laughs> i'm i'm a friend with uh, one of my one of my co-hosts is a, is a physicist or an amateur yeah. physicist and he, yeah. he his if he's anything like most physicists yeah it's almost like it's not worth entertaining the conversation about realistic time travel because yeah, it doesn't fucking work it's just simply not realistic yeah. And it's not worth like, you, like you're stopped so far before the actual act of time travel that it's not even worth having that conversation. And it's like, so don't do that. Like the, the, yeah. what you should really talk to is people who are like experts in logic or in like, you know, cycles, you know, people who like can understand or explain a time loop yeah. or like, a, or a hypothetical scenario. Like that's, you don't talk to, but don't, don't try to make time travel real. Like I, I remember, what was it in end game where they're like, you're trying to explain time travel. Yeah. And I'm like, you didn't explain it at all. Like him saying like, I don't know why everyone assumes that this is, these are the rules of time travel. Your present becomes your past and your past becomes your new present. So it can't be affected by your future. And I'm like, that doesn't mean anything. Well, and also puts you in a position where the entire rules of the universe are now predicated on the actions of an individual. Yes. So like you step on a butterfly and every everybody else's lives change. And narratively, I don't know that I like, I like that. Like it's one of the, yeah. like, 
Like, um, uh, it takes away the agency of literally everybody else on the planet. Um, Absolutely. No, the, the best, the best explanation for time travel for me is Terminator where, uh, she, he's explaining it to Sarah and yeah. he's a grunt who doesn't really understand time travel. Yeah. And she is a waitress. Yeah. And she is like, you mean he's from the future? And he goes, one possible future. I don't know. I don't get tech stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like all yeah, yeah, like, yeah. the idea that I, 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 and just to talk about time travel for a second, like, I mean, I love the fun of back to the future, mm -hmm. but I don't like the like arbitrary. Oh, like because I'm doing this now, it changes that. And then it's going to have a ripple effect that changes me, but I have enough time to prevent it because I'm being changed in real time. Like, no, yeah. but I really like Terminator's time travel where it's like, it, you know, the idea of, like, cause everybody always talks about like the end of the world or the, like, you go back and you kill your grandfather so that it, that, that stops you from doing it in the first place. Yeah. And I'm like, no, I don't like that because for me, I'm like, you're physically here. Like, like it doesn't change you metaphysically. You're physically well, able to change the, the, you know what I mean? Like you're physically able to affect your environment. A magical wave of, of a hypothetical isn't going to come over and overtake you and change things and create a paradox. But see, it's like, I, yeah. Finish your thought. Oh, just like, I'm removed from the timeline from yeah. where I was. I'm here now in this, yeah. in the past. I exist whether I change the past or not. It's just a question of like, does that, you know, what does that mean? And what does that do for, for the future that I'm about to, that I'm basically living in now. Like I'm here yeah. for forever. There's nothing else I can do about it, but like, I'm not going to erase myself. I may erase the timeline I came from, but I don't belong there anymore. Cause I'm not physically there anymore. Yeah, but and then but then you get into the issues like matter cannot be created or destroyed. So you, the physical corporeal body that is in the past, where the fuck did that came come well, from? I, I brought it here because your matter because your matter is used other places. Your right. the things that make you from the future are in other things in the current present timeline. Yeah, so that's an issue. I think what you're talking about gets closer to, and I kind of, I liked this element of it, even though I don't really enjoy Looper. No, um, gets Ugh. into this idea of like, yeah, you you're not going to sneeze and change everything. Time is going to heal itself. Like it's not right. going to fuck up everybody else's life. Cause you're dicking around just because you're an idiot. Out. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Uh, I love, but I do love in this, the, the, like the, the quantum leap of it. Yeah. Send your mind into your younger body. Yeah. Good. Yeah. That, that, that's, that's fine. We get, um, uh, red walrus 55 professor X saw the future via talking to his future self. Also Eric did review, sentinel designs not saying that should make him mm. an expert um uh, but yeah they saw some some potential stuff i will say to this day as if you're listen if you're just talking about movies like fucking terminator 2 i enjoy yep. this movie you know what i mean the the, yes. the fun storytelling time travel whatever yes. if you're talking about the movie that i think tackled it the most coherently mm -hmm. um or the most um grounded is there's a movie called primer yeah. Um, unfortunately, I think that director is uh, a problem. It's a problem, uh, which is a bummer. But like Primer is fucking great. And even that movie, it's the most grounded use of time travel I've ever seen. And even that yeah. movie, it, part of the premise of that movie is even in that very small controlled environment, it immediately gets out of control. Like, yes, it, 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 that's the point of the movie. It just falls apart almost immediately. Yeah. It's like a, it, the movie is a criticism of time travel. Yeah. <laughs> It's great. It's good. It's a good. I again, unfortunately, the director of this movie that we're talking about is also a fucking skis. Uh, so yeah. that's a problem. But if we're just talking about the movies, Primer <laughs> is a good movie. Uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Anyway, whatever. Uh, future saved. Uh, in the past, Logan is pulled out of the drink by he's thrown into a river. He's he's pulled out by Striker. But uh oh. <gasps> uh, also, Mystique I don't know how Striker. What? Mystique Striker. Also, I don't know how far in the future. Like how long was Logan in the river? Because there's a newspaper talking about Str trask being like arrested and shit yeah yeah uh um, well unlike wait what does that mean yeah i don't like i guess we know sentinels now <laughs> well like does does mystique run weapon x oh the mystique so yeah we we talked does, over it a little bit but yeah so striker's eyes <gasps> it's mystique which also once you get to apocalypse there's a whole weapon x scene it's like what is that yeah what is that like mm -hmm. and do we know do, i don't remember does wolverine pop his claws in the new utopian present or future yeah we because, do not he does not so we don't like, know so we don't know if like does she save him from weapon x or does she doom him to weapon x yes all what? good questions that we do not have answers to and we never will we live yeah in the future, like any no. good x-men post-credit scene or yes. 
or 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 like you know set up we never pay it off we never pay it off uh we do get a post credit scene it's in one presumes ancient oh it is ancient egypt because he's building the pyramids uh, it's N7 Noor, uh, played by uh, some Timothy Chalamet looking motherfucker. Um, yeah. And uh, and that at least does set up that Mag- uh, Apocalypse will be the villain of the next movie. Yes. That is at least true. That is true. So now that's Days of Future Past, everybody. Um, let's get over to X Factor, where we talk about a little bit of the behind the scenes stuff. Yeah. Um, as I think we all are aware of. Uh, Matthew Vaughn was originally supposed to direct this. Yep. Um, and he dropped out to do the Kingsman movie. That's probably for the best. I'm, I, I like, it, yeah, I in, think so. In the long run, we're now three, he's done well, three Kingsman movies to diminishing returns. Yes, but those are his movies. Like, that's his franchise. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. he gets to, he, he, he owns those movies whether he wants to or not, but like, those yeah. are his, he, be- like, those franchises belong to him. I think that like for I think he would not regret it. I think he's like, yeah, I'm glad I didn't make this future past. Yeah, well, apparently the reason he dropped out was um, he wanted to do uh, a more specifically first class sequel. Yeah, and the end of the trilogy would have been Days of Future Past. I found this quote from Coming Soon. That's one of the reasons I didn't continue because they didn't listen to me. My plan was first class, then a second film. Um, uh, was a new young Wolverine in the seventies to continue those characters, uh, my version of X Men. So you'd really get to know them. And uh, my finale was going to be Days of Future Past. That was going to be my number three, where you bring them all because ah. that's uh, bigger than bringing. Because what what is bigger than bringing McKellen and Michael and Stewart and James and bringing them all together? Yeah, yeah. Um, when I finished the Days of Future Past script uh, with it ready to go, I looked at it and said, I really think it would be fun to cast Tom Hardy or someone as the young Wolverine hmm. and bring it all together at the end. Uh, Fox read Days of Future Past and went, oh, this is too good. We're doing it now. And I <laughs> said, uh, well, what do you do next? Trust me, you've got nowhere to go. Yeah. And did, did Apocalypse. And it's like, if you flip that around, it even would have been better. Hollywood doesn't understand pacing. Their executives are driving 100 miles per hour, looking in the rearview mirror and not understanding why they crash. He's right. Uh, he's right to a degree. Again, it's, I from anybody. I, Sal, have you seen The King's Man, the third Kingsman no, movie? I've seen one right. Kingsman movie. Yeah. Okay. Oh, you've only seen the good one. Got <sighs> yes. it. Um, so having seen all the Kingsman movies, you know, I take Matthew Vaughn's input with a grain of salt on uh, pacing and stuff like that. I also think, um, I don't know, man. Like, I, I think... I understand. Okay, do a first class. Let's say a second class. You do a second class, and then you do Days of Future Past. I get that because you're right. How do you top it? And of course, they struggle to top it after. Yeah, that. get it. Yeah, but also like, why wait? You know what I mean? Like yeah. the wait, wait around. What if second class fucking blows? People are yeah. not interested in in that. And also, I think Tom Hardy would have, could have, should have been a really great Wolverine. Yep. Um, he's Venom now, so that's not going to happen. But also. Nope. You had Hugh Jackman in first class. What are you saying? You'd have Tom Hardy a younger in, for- in the in the sequel. What do you mean? Yeah. yeah, no. Did you now? Do we also have the fun other piece of information that came out like two or three days ago? Ooh, oh, which uh, about why he didn't do Last Stand? Why he didn't do? Uh, yeah, I guess Last Stand. Why he share why, with the uh, class? Why out. I dropped I don't know out. What you're talking about share with the uh, class. Vaughn uh, apparently observed this according to uh, Entertainment Weekly, the studio being deceitful with Oscar winning actress Halle Berry, who uh, played Storm. Quote, Hollywood is really political and odd. I went to an executive's office where I saw a script that was a lot fatter, the director recalled. I was like, what the hell is this draft? And they said, oh, don't worry about it. Uh, Vaughn was the director at that point, so he decided he did need to worry about it and look at the script and open the first page, uh, which was set in Africa, where Barry Storm would create a thunderstorm to save starving children. Quote, that's a pretty good idea, said Vaughn. Uh, but I was like, what is this? And they said, oh, that was Halle Berry's script. She hasn't signed on yet, but this is what she wants it to be. So once she signs on, we'll throw it in the bin. And I said, wow, you're going to do that to an Oscar winning actress? I'm out of here. So I quit at that point. And yeah. I was like, wow, yeah. Um, huh? Yeah, props to Matthew Vaughn. That is the correct call. Sounds like, like they do that all the time. Crazy that they got Hallie with that, because I have to assume she knows that pro- probably prior to Days of Future Past. How much money did they back up to? Because da- she's not even that utilized in Days of Future Past. Like, I'm no. she's there, but like she's really, barely in it. Can you imagine being like hired to write a fake script to trick did, did, an actor into being in your movie? 
god damn it and then you actually have good scene like the, the idea of like storm helping kids in africa it's like that's actually what well, good scene idea opening that's a cool. movie in africa being storm being a god i'm like yeah that they'll you know what's funny the mcu you know they're just gonna steal that like there's should. that's the movie like that's the opening they should well we talked about Oh wait, did we just transition to our next uh, last thing? Ex, uh, oh yes, actor Cable and Bishop Bishop were both considered to be the time travelers. Um, we all know why they chose Hugh Jackman's Wolverine. Um, yeah. and like I mentioned earlier, Rachel Summers was going to be in a draft, being the one sending Wolverine back. That's fun. Uh, and there were uh, Angel Salvador, um, fucking Zoe Kravitz character, uh, Juggernaut, Jubilee, Nightcrawler, and Psylocke were all considered to be in the film. I think keeping it tighter was smart. Uh, and Titer's relative. Look at this fucking goddamn cast. Like, I know, fucking, right? <laughs> like, what, well, what do you mean, Titer? Fucking shit. Um, yeah, yeah. So, Sal just segued it into us. New mutants. New mutants. What, if anything, is the MCU going to steal from this? We know. Time travel. Yeah. Sentinels. Dark future. Uh, lone warrior, like Kyle Reese characters like Cable and Bishop. Yeah. Um, the friendship between Xavier and Magneto. Um, and, uh, you know, and, and, and the popularity of Wolverine. Like, yeah. Definitely. Any of those, any of those. Well, I worry that they won't do I, here. I think they should take, um, uh, when you're talking about dark future and I literally think it should be Fox timeline dark future like like um yeah. uh like somebody like um <clears throat> refuge refugee from the fox timelines that's like yes. one time it was sentinels one time it was this bleak western wolverine and professor x of being a grumpy old couple like yes. none of the futures were good so that's what we're having now that we're in the mcu we've got other superheroes running around we got to do what we can to prevent or you could do um I, I feel I think I mentioned this in another one. I think that's how you incorporate elements from the Krakoa era. Yeah. Um is is because that opens with um a dark future. Um and maybe you open open it with like let's say you you make Bishop like a because Bishop's they're selling the Bishop toy for the new X Men ninety seven show. So Bishop is a main character in the new cartoon for X Men ninety seven. He's a, he's a dope toy. Bishop yeah. is a is a and I, and you know what. Bishop's a fun gateway character for the X-Men, a character who is already contextual. It's a great ride along character for the audience. He's yeah. he's contextually aware of the X-Men and their continuity. Yeah. And he's going to participate in their adventures right now. Like that's yeah. that's kind of funny and smart to do that. Yeah. If gateway, if, if your gateway character is going to be Bishop. Yeah. And so like maybe you have a dark future where it is Iron Man Sentinels and yeah. like Hulk has been turned into a mutant killing monster or whatever. Totally. And so then that we bail out of that future. Or or we just we just go Dage Reach Pass with it. We see a graveyard and it says like Bruce Banner, Stephen Strange, Peter Parker. Like everyone who would have been from the MCU is dead. And you your only is. hope is the X-Men. So I think what you're suggesting is that as good an adaptation as this is, there's still enough untapped potential that you could still just do the thing. You could easily just do Days of Future Past. You could call it Days of Future Past. I wouldn't recommend it because unfortunately it's it's the best X-Men movie right now. So yeah. you can't like steal it. But like Days of Future Past, the comic book has never been made. Yeah. Still. And you yeah. could and, and the MCU is the perfect ones to do it. Yeah. They, they'd have to steal it. You know what's sad? They could call it Future Imperfect. Mm -hmm. But it had to steal it from the Hulk. Yeah, well, that's fine. <laughs> that's Which is fine because they're never going to do it. That's fine. Uh, I did want to. Um, um, I'll talk to you about that off air. Anyway, no. <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, 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 no, I think I think that would be cool. I think you could get you could get some. Um, uh, I, I, again, because I think it depends on how you want to do it. I think you're going to have to do something like that to explain where why X Men matter now. Yes. You know, yes. The universe now. Right, like they uh, were not str the 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 the, your, the Avengers were not strong enough to handle the oncoming problem. Yeah, yeah, and so we you know we now we need to get out of the shadows and like and and I think I suggested another one. You could I would even suggest like Roseburn's great. You bring her back as Moira, yeah. and and so then you have two competing, uh, Moira and Bishop in this scenario. Yeah, or I have two competing versions like Moira because Moira, she comes back the long way. If you've been reading the Krakoa era, she, it doesn't she lives in a whole nother lifetime yep 
she whispered in this professor x's ear like hey man hide the mutants hide all yeah, the mutants." right and, and then bishop shows up and is like that's not gonna fucking cut it <laughs> and also yes. don't trust that lady <laughs> right no the moment that is a perfect way to to establish the x-men is that if a traveler from the future shows up and says you can't hide anymore you have to come out and you gotta like and arguably maybe you need to put him in some freaking costumes because that's what this world is used to dude that's the one thing and i think we've maybe mentioned this every episode that's the one one of the great gifts of being in the mcu is now you get to go back to the original explanation of like listen people love avengers people love the fantastic four uh we want them to love mutants guess what we're a superhero team <laughs> yeah exactly i know we didn't plan on this but yeah. this is the new normal yeah yeah, yeah. That that would be cool. You, you talking about Bishop being the ride along character and how that would work. That is cool to like, listen, I know you guys might not want the costumes. I'm telling you, you need to co like, he's the fan surrogate of like, you need to do the costumes this time. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, okay. Last but not least. Our ranking. Of the X-Men movies so far. Yeah. Starting from the bottom. Right. <laughs> All right. Uh, from the bottom, so yeah. far, I think it's got to be X Men Origins Wolverine is the worst. Agreed. The, there was a gap in my thing, and last stand was at the bottom. I'm like, that can't be true. Oh, I it that last one on the list was on another page. Yes, agreed. X Men Origins. It's it's uh, laughable. It's pathetic. Every time they do it better, it makes this movie it, like you know, it makes X Men Origins Wolverine look more laughable and terrible like it's just like it's an it's embarrassing like just just the scene alone like from a technical standpoint from a shot standpoint from a from a directorial standpoint the scene where wolverine deals with blob yeah. is just embarrassing yes yes like and, and every scene is like that yeah so so for me yeah bottom of my list six men origins next worst yeah is last stand last stand is easily the second worst of the franchise especially so far yeah um what's your what's your next one after last stand after Last Stand, I think I gotta go uh, the Wolverine. Uh, I think no the first Wolverine. class is a little better than the Wolverine. I loved the Wolverine. Uh, I just and it and it's tight. It really works. I think that first class and the Wolverine are pretty much exactly as good as it as each other. But I'm gonna edge out the Wolverine only because I think that it should be easy to make a Wolverine movie. <laughs> but but Sal but we have so two. Low. The bar's so low, <laughs> but it's so low. Like, but like, you know, the Wolverine, it doesn't, it gets a lot of things right. Yeah. But the Gene stuff, the last act, the Viper, just it, 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 the, the silliness of that and the things that just make it like almost antithetical to itself edge out for me. I think the Wolverine is the, is the third worst. You make a really good argument. I think for me, I would flip those for me. It's, but I think you're right that by and large, their same quality level. Yeah. I think for me, maybe because I like Wolverine more and I like Wolverine fighting ninjas more. Totally fair. For it's first class and then the Wolverine. That's me. fair with me. I'm I'm happy with that arrangement, but also it's ne it's neck and neck. Like it depending on the day. It's depending on the day and which scene I'm thinking about. Right? Yeah. <laughs> right? <laughs> like I pick to think about. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So so next so next one for me. Now we're in the top three. Yes. So Days of Future Past is always doing pretty good. Yeah. I think for me, this one's tough. This yeah. one, these top three is tough, but I think for me, X1 is yeah. the next one on my list. Definitely. Okay. Yep. What about, so So it's X1 and then for you, we did the top two. <sighs> yeah, top two. I you think Silver I'm, Metal. Yeah, I think I'm going to have to give Days of Future Past part two because it has a lot, like, you're not here unless they screwed up. Mm-hmm. <laughs> You know what I mean? Yeah. And X-Men 2 is like the height of the franchise. They're doing everything right. There is so much to love. Even though like Lady Death Strike is, an, is, is just, what are you doing? Yeah. Um, it's tight. It's clean. It's fun. It makes you, X-Men 2 is the movie that makes you want more X-Men movies. And Days of yeah. Future Past is the last X-Men movie. <laughs> yeah. I, I, once again, great argument. I think I would flip them. That's fair. And here's, and here's why. Because Days of Future Past is all of it. Yeah, it's, it's all of it. All the, it's all and it's all the stuff that works. Yes, what works about our franchise. The, our Professor X's and our Magneto's work. Yep. Hugh Jackman's Wolverine works. Everything else is basically people with cool powers that are cannon fodder. Yeah, and we're not going to have you know like we're not going to be bogged down with you know explaining 
Banshee's powers no. or this love triangle with uh, Iceman and Kitty and Rogue. None of that shit. Because we're no. not. Not that that stuff doesn't have merit. It's just clearly we're not good at it and we're not interested in it. <laughs> it's only going to yeah. be the stuff that we are interested in. And so I think, I think it's it's kind of because I you make a really good argument for X two being at the top. I think for me, I'm going to put Days of Future Past in the top with X two being a close second. But, it, but like we were talking about with First Class and Wolverine, it kind of depends on my mood. It totally does that day. Because I think this is like the perfect X Men movie in terms of that we get. From oh, these guys, the perfect, yeah, exactly. This is a perfect X Men movie from Fox. Yes. So, like, this is the best they can do. <laughs> yeah, it's gonna get it's gonna get rough when Deadpool shows up. It's gonna throw it like like Deadpool himself. It's gonna throw a monkey wrench in this list. Yeah, I think I saw something. This was the highest grossing X Men movie, and we're not gonna get into this until we get into Deadpool. Until Deadpool, and it's like, wait, wow, because I know Deadpool costs less. Yeah, big time. Did it just make more money, like like comparatively based on budget, or is it? Did it make more money than Days of Future Past? Because that's insane to me. That would be insane. And like, we will get into it next time, next yeah. month when we when we talk about Deadpool. But is Deadpool next? Deadpool is next. Deadpool I'm, I, same year as Apoc Apocalypse, but but earlier, like February. Oh man, how embarrassing for Apocalypse. Yeah, I think I think it was either Apocalypse or Logan, but I think it was Apocalypse. Yeah, Apocalypse is 2016. Logan's 2017. Yeah, so Deadpool came out the same year as Apocalypse. Yeah. So next wow. time is Deadpool 1. Everybody, I don't think I've seen that movie since I saw it in theaters. Wow. I haven't seen it in a, in a, in a long time. So let us know in the comments your ranking of the X-Men movies so far for those of you that have been watching with us. Sal, before we go, let the kids know where they can find you. Yeah, swing by uh, youtube.com slash comic pop. Check out our show back issues where we break down a story and talk about the behind the scenes and the uh, events themselves. A lot of fun. Me and my friends are funny people. So check it out. Check that out. I mean, if you're watching this, you're here. You can find me at DJ Talk Strash. You can follow us everywhere that matters at Only Stupid Answers, but on Twitter X, uh, yank out the vowels from stupid. <laughs> and we will see you all next time. Bye, everybody.